they could add something that's not in the game, like um, a shrouded mm-hmm. ghost that you could go and get. I. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Welcome to the official, unofficial Sea of Thieves podcast, a podcast dedicated to Sea of Thieves and other rare games, but mainly Sea of Thieves. Today, we have a more laid-back episode in which we will discuss our wishes for this great game we're all playing. We will go over the stuff we want, but also discuss the things we think this game still needs. And obviously, there will be some overlap here and there. These wishes are not just our own, but include some wonderful suggestions from my own wonderful YouTube community. And to keep this podcast as fresh as possible, we won't focus all that much on stuff that's already been announced. And speaking about fresh, we have a brand new guest who might have the coolest name a Sea of Thieves content creator can have. Hey, it's great to be here. My name is Slim Shanty. Great to be, uh, great to finally be on the podcast. All right, welcome. I'm glad we finally have you on the podcast. Um, we've been looking for a spot since, I don't know, three months or something like that, and we finally got you on. Um, so it's nice to have somebody other than old Buccaneer on Uniball on the podcast. Speaking of which... I'm back. I'm the engineer. audio engineer. I'm the audio engineer. All right, welcome back. I'm, I'm always happy uh, when you are on. Um, also, congrats on reaching uh, 1K subscribers, you know, well. I lost it and then got it back. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, I knew that was going to happen. Very happy for you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Wait, so so what's your number right now? It might be right at 1,000. Damn, that's good. Congrats, man. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so welcome welcome to the 1K club. That's where all the cool kids hang out. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> There's a awesome. reason why you knew Ball Zone as well, um, because again, he wasn't planned. So originally this podcast was planned with just Slim Shanty, uh, and we did actually record an entire podcast with just two of us. Uh, but after the recording, we we saw that the audio was not up to the quality. Um, it was, no, uh, that's that's an understatement. It was, it, it was bad. <laughs> it really sucked. <laughs> so, in, so instead of skipping an episode, uh, we asked Kenny Ball again to uh, help us out. Uh, again, so uh, this is the second time he's able to come on when he was not planned as a guest. So, yeah, man, Uniball, you are a great help. Um, I think even Jesus Christ would be like, damn, Uniball, he's he's a good fellow. He really likes helping people. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So, of course, all your listeners know uh, Uniball. And if you don't, you know, what's wrong with you? Uh, do yourself a favor <laughs> and check out his channel. Um, Slim Shanty is, however, entirely new. So um, can you tell our listeners what they can expect when they go to your channel? Lots of trolling, mainly lots of trolling. <laughs> I always, yeah, I always say if you see me on your server, you better be careful. If you don't see me on your server, well, you better be twice as careful because I'm probably tucked on your ship. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, and just, I, I'm, I'm guessing your channel's name is also Slim Shanty. Yeah, yeah. So my, um, my channel name is Slim Shanty, and that's where you can find me on YouTube. Just type in Slim All Shanty. All right, nice. Definitely checking him out. Um, usually we go into the news segment and we have a little bit news, not, not that much. Um, some news regarding Battletoads that I quickly want to address uh, because Rare is releasing a lot of behind the scenes footage of Battletoads right now. Um, I think they're doing it to you know kind of um, uh, temper the controversy. Um, There's a lot of uh, behind the scenes footage of the crews showing a lot of passion for the franchise. So hopefully um, you know the controversy will simmer down a little bit. Uh, keep in mind that Battletoads is releasing really soon, um, on August 20th. Uh, we won't do a deep Battletoads discussion right now since we talked about that previous podcast, uh, but there might be some Battletoads content coming to this channel in the future, but, you know, no promises. So uh, if you're interested in the Battle Brawler from uh, Rare, go check it out. It is on Game Pass when it, release and it releases on the 20th of August. So... Let's go to our main discussion. Um, but before we go over first wish, uh, let me give you some insight about how this podcast is structured. Because most wishes will come from Slim Shanty, uh, since he is our honor guest today. But we will alternate his wishes with the ones I've gotten from my own community. Because I posted a community message asking my subscribers their wishes, and they did. So. Uh, In the future, I plan to make more use of the community tab on YouTube, so always keep an eye out for those. Uh, Once we discuss all the wishes from the community, we will alternate with my personal wishes. 
Um, but as some of my listeners know, the later podcasts on this channel have become uh, a bit large, so to say. So when the time's up, we're going to call it quits. But don't worry. Uh, I might do a similar podcast like this one in the future. So keep those wishes coming. So now that the structure of this podcast is hopefully clear, um, let's discuss your uh, first list, uh, Slim. So yeah, one thing that I've kind of wanted to see for a while now is a boarding axe. And I think that just add a lot to the game. Because, I mean, you look at how people uh, board ships nowadays. Like, if you're uh, trying to board a galleon and you got the whole crew staring down the ladders with blunderbusses, it's uh, it's pretty difficult, you know. And uh, I think a board axe would just, it would it would kind of balance out the game a little bit. Like, if you have mm-hmm. a full galleon trying to board a sloop, you know, it's it's super easy because you got four people versus, you know, two. And you look mm-hmm. at the other way around, you got two people trying to board a, a galleon with four people. I think a boarding act should just add a lot to it. You know, it'd, it'd be something that you would have to uh, switch out one of your weapons for, I think would be a good thing. And mm-hmm. uh, I think, uh, yeah, and and on top of that, I, I think it should be something that you should be able to run down and, you know, use it to pry off boards off of existing holes that they've patched up. And I think it just add a, a very interesting element to the game. Also, it'd be great fun to troll people with, so that would be definitely something <laughs> I would use a lot. I, uh, yeah, you hear it a lot in the community, especially in the beginning. Like a lot of people want want a boarding axe. Uh, I mean, yeah. while we read the uh, the novel, and there's also mention of a axe, not a boarding axe, but there's an axe in the, in the novel for sure. Um, so how do you see it working exactly? Like you said, like, um, like a replacement for a weapon, like it could be a yeah. fifth weapon. Is that how you're thinking? Yeah. Yeah. So like fifth weapon. So, you know, mm-hmm. it's because otherwise I think if you had like two weapons and a boarding axe, I think that'd be a little bit overpowered, but yeah. So you could sacrifice one of your weapons for a boarding axe and like, it'd be like a melee weapon where, you know, you could swing it at somebody, but you'd have like the, the three, they're like the cool down that you'd get after the three sword swing combo, but you get mm-hmm. that after every single swing. So it'd be very inefficient for killing people, but it'd mm-hmm. mostly be used for like boarding. And then once you boarded, you'd almost want to go switch it out with a different weapon or something, you know, if gotcha. Yeah. So it sounds I, I like a lot of balancing a, to do. There, I mean, yeah, yeah. They're, I mean, mm-hmm. they're still balancing their current guns and weapons. Yeah, and they're so. struggling with that too. So. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> Let's it, bring it another be, weapon. It'd definitely so be they, a big struggle for them. It's going to sure. be harder. Yeah, plus all the cosmetics they need to do. Like, you need yeah. to have a... Uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of lot of work. Um, so, uh, I don't know. I, I know a lot of people want it, uh, for sure. Uh, and it is... Yeah, the, maybe. Maybe. I'm not... Mm, I'm not waiting for it, exactly. But it does sound cool if you can uh, get boards off. Um, so I would, what I would want is maybe, you know, consum- consumable boring axe. So you can use it one or two times. So it's not too OP, right? So you can't go to town yeah. with all those uh, planks, just, just a few. And then you yeah. need to still, uh, fight them if you want to sing them, which is great if, if you're a solo that, player. Um, yeah, that's actually very interesting. That'd be, that's, that's a I, cool idea. Yeah, and I'm I'm always thinking like there's a, always a lot of you, there's going to be a trend during this podcast by the way for the people who are listening like we have a lot of good ideas, um but those are those are just you know ideas of things we might find interesting so it's not a deep dive we haven't you know written uh, a, a page per wish about how to implement this um so keep that in mind, um yeah. but uh but yes uh, something to to get planks loose that that would be nice I definitely see that. Yeah, um, I, I think it'd be a great addition. I uh, anything you want to add, Uniball? Boarding X, how do you feel about that? I like it. Um and as you guys were discussing, I was thinking, I was like, man, that'd be hard to implement. Um, but I do like the idea. I think it'd be cool. I think maybe I don't know, when I was thinking about it, I was like, well, maybe, you know, boarding axe could just be for sloops, you know, mm-hmm. a sloop only thing that you could Ooh. equip on a sloop because galleons, you know, would have that advantage of extra people. Um, Ooh, but then I was thinking it's technically, be a lot of controversy. Yeah, yeah. Then I was thinking technically, you do like, that. Uh, it might be hard to actually implement because you'd have to make the whole ship interactable. Yeah, um, you know, with the axe. Yeah, like well, yeah, that is true. But and how do you feel about the idea of of just you know getting planks loose with an axe? That would be. I think that would be cool. I think that's needed because you could definitely. There's so much content you can make from that. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah, yeah. Especially as a solo slooper, right? Because yeah. that's that's a problem when you're a solo slooper. Um, fighting is really hard because you need to when you repair your ship, 
um, you need to get some holes and then you need to board them and you know pray to God that they're not shooting you while you're boarding uh, them because otherwise your ship will sink. I mean, obviously, like if you're a group player, like you can get around stuff like that. Um, but if you're just, you know, if you're boarding X, you only need to focus on boarding them and hope hope that they already have some planks around there. So interesting, could be cool. So let's go to um, one of my subscribers, uh, one of his wishes. Let's go to Miyagi first. Um, he's not really wanting all that much uh, new content or anything new added. Uh, he, he does want uh, Rare to focus more on bug fixes. Um, he says, I love the update, but they seem to keep making bugs pop up, uh, and some bugs are returning, like the you no know, wind bug. And for people who don't know, it's well, basically, you can't see the wind direction and you need to look at your flag, um, which is non intentional, of course. It's cool that you can still see it from your flag, but you know, you should be able to see the wind. So, how do you guys feel about that? Like, yeah, not really new stuff as long as they focus on uh, fixing all the, all the bugs. Well, I think it's a, a great thing that they add the emissary flags because now it's a lot easier to see your wind when the when mm -hmm. the when you see your flag when your the wind dies down. But um, yeah, I don't, they 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 really need to fix the bugs. I mean, yeah, that's that's uh, which, which I feel they always do. Like a lot of people complain about that, and I I, <laughs> I think I at least on average about two see of glitch videos where I, sh I show like twenty different glitches. So it always seems that Sea of Thieves is full of glitches. Um, but let's be honest, like, have you played other games? <laughs> like, all all games these days have some glitches in one form or another. Um, some are really irritating for Sea of Thieves, uh, especially the hit wreck. Um, that one is annoying, I think, and should be fixed. And I think me and you talked about it, Uniball, then we lost the uh, podcast. Yeah. Yeah, so so you can fix on fixing hit wreck this month, for example, but then you get new content next month and then you can start all over again because the code is, is you know different again like i'm not a developer but you know that's it's kind of how it goes um so there's always a team working on bug fixes at red you, you, you can you know rest assured that's always the case uh and those are not the same team so if you say all right i want them to focus on bug fixes only and non content well, then one of those teams is not doing anything that month. So they always have people working on uh, content and working on, you know, hit rack and the server side and all that stuff like that. And of course, there's overlap. Of course, there's overlap. Um, but um, but yeah, it's just, just the way it is. And, and they are always working on that stuff, uh, even though, well, hit rack is a bit weird. And uh, I get the complaints that are coming from that. You know, as many times as they've, you know, in each update, they make improvements to hit reg. Seems like mm -hmm. they always, I don't, I don't know what, what it is, but they always seem to have issues with hit reg, even after updating it like quite a few yeah. times and uh, fixing it, so to speak. I, yeah, we, I, like I said, we, we discussed it in the previous podcast too. Like uh, in the beginning, there, there weren't that many issues, but the game has so much content now that just brings all these issues with them. And, they're working hard, but there's so, only so much you can do, right, in a month. Yeah. So uh, keep tight. They're always working on fixing that stuff, and a lot of stuff does get fixed. Um, he said, uh, aside from all the box fixes he wants, he also wants more life. He says, I really want an immersion update with more land animals and sea life. Yeah, I mean, that would be, um, I think that'd be a great addition to the game. Honestly. Yeah, um, me too. Yeah, they, they, uh, they definitely could. I think it'd be something that would be relatively easy to do, but like mm -hmm. on Rare's part. But um, I think that would bring bring a lot of life back into the game, for sure. Yeah, I mean, even simple stuff like we have sharks, right? Well, I want a hammerhead shark. I mean, just make <laughs> yeah, just make a different skin, right? They can act the same. They don't need to act yeah, differently. Yeah, or like yeah, maybe make make their head box a little bit bigger. You know, at the nose, of course. Uh, but that's about it, and that would that would go a long way to making it more varied. Uh, parrots too. Again, we've yeah. talked about this, um, especially when we did our, uh, you know our analyze of the boss traders. I did we knew boss. I think it was our second or third episode or something like that. And um, like in the, in the first trailers were parrots that were reacting to you. Like you had a flock of parrots on the ground. They're doing their own stuff, and if you walk up to them, they fly away. Um, so stuff like that, I really wanted in the game. 
Um, so I can totally see where Miyagi is coming from. Yeah, more more wildlife, more sea life, yeah. uh, for sure. All right. That's a good one, Miyagi. Thanks for that. Yeah, or even like your hammerhead sharks. Like you could have them so that you know they have a chance, like one in five chance of spawning instead of a regular shark, and uh -huh. they're more aggressive. You know, you have to like deal with them like immediately, and they, do, you know, they there's they strike quicker in between strikes, and you know, there's there's a lot of things they could add. Uh, you know, just yeah, change it sure. up a little bit. And it's always going. It's always a point of my well. One one of my criticisms always comes up. I just want more life. <laughs> I'm so yeah, yeah, for sure. Anyways, I want um... death. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry. Anything you want to add to it, you move up? <laughs> uh, no, as Slim said, it probably would be easy. I mean, they have all the mechanics in the game. They just need to change the uh, the look uh, of these animals. Yeah, yeah. It, one it, I think it is the needed. Wildlife expansion. I think it is needed. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, will be sweet. All right, let's go to another of your wishes, Slim. Let's see. Naming your ship would be uh would be kind of a cool thing, you know. Um, mm -hmm. you look at how they have like the the ship at uh, Shipwreck Bay. They have a name on it, and you know they have like yes. the names for Black uh, Witch. Yeah, Black Witch. They have the names for like the sunken ships. I think I think that'd be a cool addition, you know, and. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, like to uh, there's there's a lot of things they could add to add to that too. You know, like when you board somebody's ship or when you get in close proximity of the ship, um, you could have their name pop up or or like when they sink. You know, like the sound it makes when a ship sinks. You could you could have it that it a little title screen pops up saying you know the the black witch has sunk or you know or whatever the guy's mm -hmm. ship's name is. I I think that black be, pearl like night yeah is gonna be called black pearl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. You can bet your ass on that. Yeah, no, I, I think that would be uh, that'd be like a very cool little thing for players. Like when you sink somebody's ship, it mm -hmm. just adds to the whole like feeling of accomplishment that you just sunk somebody's ship. You know, instead of just uh, the the gong noise that it makes. Yeah, plus the fact that you can name your own ship. I mean, that that's yeah, pretty yeah, sweet in sure. itself. Yeah. Uh, they have talked about it, and again, this is one of those wishes that you know people in the first month of the game already had. So, any options you would like for naming your ship? Do you want to uh, select your font, like a different yeah, font? Yeah, I mean, you could you could have it set up like it. I I think when you at the at the ship right there and you're picking mm -hmm. out your ship, yeah, you should be able to like there should be an option for uh, your nameplate. You know, you could pick out your font and you could even have, um, I don't know, like flaming font, or you could have like different fonts that cost money that you have to spend gold for yeah. or whatever. You know, there there's a lot of things they could do do with that that would add I, into the game quite a bit. I know. totally agree. It would be sweet. I, I really hope we'll get that soon. Uh they are gonna do it by the way, but it's it's taking really long. Yeah. Um, they they actually said it three years ago that they were gonna do it. So hey, um <laughs> that's still their official statement. So yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. let's wait a little bit longer. Why not? Uh, what would your name be if you could name your ship? I know I'd probably go with something like uh, the Bone Collector, or, <laughs> or uh, yeah, you, you gotta get something. I, I, yeah, the Bone Collector. Well, that's that's someone something. Um, mine obviously will be the uh, the Salty Hippo, of course. Yeah, uh, named yeah. after the ship from Bench Kazooie, sailed by Captain Blur himself. So Salty Hippo, yeah, for sure. Uh, are you Uniball? The sugary hippo. The sugary hippo. All right. <laughs> no, I don't know. I'd, I'd probably do something <laughs> stupid, though. That makes All right. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. I, I think I asked you before and just like Uniball you, or something like that. Yeah. It was something <laughs> dumb. Uh, shit, I do hope you get more creative uh, with your names. Don't. Uh, that's yeah. why you're so bad at, name, uh, at naming your uh, YouTube videos. Probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just cannot do it. Music oh, video. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is a YouTube uh, video. Yeah. <laughs> CFT's content video. Uh, anyways. That's going to be my next one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else you guys want to add uh, about naming your ship? So, you know, when you're looking at your spyglass and you look at a, a mm -hmm. ghost ship, or you look at a ship that. Um, is a a, a reaper, or emissary flag on it? You know, have mm -hmm. that little sting sound. Um, you can have oh, like yeah. you can you can have something where when you look at it and you get the sting, you get like a little title pops up and you can see whose ship it is. Because there's a lot of times yeah. if you get into like a ship fight where there's more than just two ships, um, you can kind of see whose ship you're to go after. You know, it, it'd be 
a little bit easier to recognize like um, mm -hmm. or distinguish different ships from each other. I mean, I to think. me, it just adds flavor if you can yeah. see the name. Yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I gave it to us rare. That's a nice yeah. wish. There you go. Which is probably gonna be true, come true. So hey. I mean, we don't know when. Maybe five years. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hopefully. So let hopefully not. So let's go to another um, community wish, and this one is from Neil Zeringui, and I'm I'm butchering your name. I really am sorry. Uh, but Neil, uh, he says he wants uh, tavern mini games. He said, let us interact with dice in the tavern or give us a deck of cards to play on our ship. So, uh, how do you feel about that, Sam? You know, there, there's um, if you look at the forums, there's a mm -hmm. there's a lot of people uh, talk about that, and you know, there's uh, there's all kinds of op or all kinds of people that decide, or there's all kinds of um, ideas out there from. You know, tavern mini games to uh, the Death Ship mini games, right? The Fairy of the Dam. Like when you go to the Fairy of the Dam, oh, yeah. it's mm -hmm. a galleon. So you should run down, you should be able to run downstairs to like the mid deck. And there, there'd be like um, options of playing mini games with other people that have died or something. And I, I think that'd be kind of a cool thing. You'd have to make it so that the, the mini games would be very short on the Death Ship. Because I mean, obviously, uh -huh. you don't want people just hanging out on the Death Ship. But um, I think yeah, like that's that that would be kind of a, a really cool interaction, and uh, I one would thing you, would you be able to gamble your own gold? Yeah, so that's 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 one thing I think would be kind of cool because um, mm -hmm. as it is right now, you know, I have like you know close to ten million dollars and I bought everything in the game, and I, mm -hmm. I think it'd be kind of a cool idea. Like if I wanted to like play some high high bets or something with other people, you know, I could I could say okay, I'll meet you in this tavern and. Um, you know, the sky's the limit. I'll I'll bet whatever, whatever anybody <laughs> wants. And yeah, I I think it just kind of add to something, you know, because like you got all these all these people that are um, that have so much gold they don't know what to spend it on, and it's just mm -hmm. gonna accumulate. So you know, why not? You know, why not just go crazy and make some, you know, crazy bets? Yeah. And, you know, see if you can and get it's, to any. It's yeah. a pirate thing to do, right? Dies and it cards. is. Oh yeah, I associate that with pirates for sure. Yeah. Um. I'm not. I'm not that keen of having it on the ferry of the damned. Um. I would just. I. I would more see it like a table on your ship, and you can invite because it's always there, right? Like you need to right. be lucky in the in the ferry of the damned. Um. The only thing that's going to be hard to program, I guess, or you know, uh, work around is is it's an interactive. Well, you can't pause the game. It's a multiplayer game. So right. if you're if you're playing on a table with another crew with your own crew. It's you know it needs to be in real time. So if some some other dickhead comes on your ship and shoots you or shoots at the table, you should get damage, right? Otherwise, you can just play the game if you want to be invisible, invincible right. for a while. So you need right. to have a little work around that. Yeah. So I mean, I think that it should be set up just like when you go, when you're when you're sailing around and you go into your options to like see mm -hmm. what your level is on your gold hoarders or you know just like that. It, it pops up a menu, but you can still die when you're in that menu. Yeah. And you can kind of see yeah. around the outside edges anyways if something did run up on you. You have Indeed. reduced visibility, but, you know, I, I think that's... But still, if you're mid-game and you die, what happens with the money? <laughs> it would just like... go back to where it originally came from. If it, you oh, know, if, yeah. if you died, it'd just, it'd just simply go back. Yeah. And, you know, the money yeah, would only exchange hands at the very end when yeah. whoever won. No, whatever. that could work. That's smart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And would you like to see dice or cards? Um, I mean, whichever one, it would have to be something very simple and mm -hmm. easy. So I'm, I'm thinking like dice. Yeah. You could, you could have, yeah. I mean, you could have something that's a very quick and fast game. It have to be fairly quick and fast. You know, it can't be yeah. too complicated. I don't think. But no, I totally agree. Yeah, no, that's fun. I would definitely uh, want to see that. Um, and maybe in the in the Wild Legend hideout could be a table to to play. Yeah, yeah, that that would be cool. I mean, because the thing is, too, the Pirate Legend Hideout is a universal. Like, you know, there is only one on every server. So, like, if you were mm -hmm. to go in at Dagger Tooth and somebody else was going to Galleon's Grave, you know, it's the same. It's the same one. So, you know, you I... can meet you can meet people from across the server. Yep, totally agree. And you know, start a vendetta. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why not? That's the uh, that's one of the reasons the Pirate uh, Pirate Legend Hideout. I feel sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
surfing that as well. That's cool. That's cool. So yeah, thanks. Um, let's see. Thanks, Neil, for that uh, uh, suggestion. Again, I'm butchering your name, so sorry for that. But thanks very much for your wish. Um, anything you want to add to that, Uniball? By the way, uh, to ask you. that'd be cool if they did cards, because I'd I'd just be sitting there playing the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gotcha. <laughs> Uh, so let's go to another one of your wishes, uh, Slim. So, um, yeah, you know, one thing I think that'd be really cool is the ability to uh, buy supplies like uh, crates or um, uh, just food in general. Because, um, mm -hmm. like, stocking up your ship when you first log into the game is always kind of annoying, you know. Yeah. I mean, as it is, as it is, you can already kind of buy uh, crates from the merchant, you know, if you if you have a quest. And... Mm -hmm. You know, you know, it'll say like collect so many cannonball crates, or deliver a full cannonball crate to this outpost. And you can actually pick up your cannonball crate, and um, I think they should have an option where you can pick up like a cannonball crate that's already full, and that you know if you mm. sold it, um, it wouldn't it wouldn't be any money or nothing. But like just for or just have a supply crate. Like you can't sell supply crates currently in the game, mm -hmm. so you know you could have. You could have something where you could pick up supply crates, and you could like you could adjust how much food that's in your supply crates and how many supplies, and mm. you know it would go up accordingly. You know, and, maybe uh, they're already planning for something like that since since what you said you can't you can't sell supply crates, so maybe yeah. maybe they're already thinking. About yeah, implementing yeah, I think something that like would that. be that would be a a very very good thing because I mean when you when you first log into the game it's just it's just kind of one of those things it takes so long yeah. for people to um get especially moving if and you stuff yeah 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 and especially like you know if you see a ship sitting at an outpost <laughs> and you cannon over there and you tuck on their ship you know you have to wait so long for them to like actually <laughs> get moving it would be nice you know <laughs> you, you gotta get you gotta get the trolling happening quicker you know uh -huh. i now i get it too it's one of the the, the things I, I still don't like about cfp is just the Getting started, right? It just takes a while right. before you can set sail. If you're smart, like if you, if you're dumb, you can you set sail straight away, so you don't have that problem. But if you're smart, you, you supply your ship first. Yeah, um, yeah, it, it takes a while. I I don't, then, I don't agree with um with buying crates or buying supplies or anything like yeah. that, because if if people have who have more money will have an advantage at the beginning of the game, so I don't think they'll ever do that. I am thinking about just giving a crate, just give a storage crate, like your ship spawns in. There's also storage crates on your ship, uh, and then you can just walk around the island, fill that one up, and and you're done. And that would go yeah. so much faster. And if everybody has it, so it's yeah. not a challenge anymore. Yeah, uh, that is so that, that is true. Yeah. All right. So that's that's how I'm thinking. That would be a good idea. Yeah. Anything just to speed up the the initial you know stocking of your ship. Because I mean I've seen people even. They'll they'll forget the stock of their ship, and then they'll be like, "Hey, let's stop at this island here. Uh, we'll see if there's any barrels in." You know, they end up island hopping for the first, mm -hmm. you know, half an hour to forty-five minutes, just trying to get supplies. And you know, I've, I've seen that happen before. So I think, yeah, just a supply crate that you could pick up and go and fill up. I think that'd be, I... no, that'd be that, totally that'd be agree. very cool. Yeah, the best solution now is is actually to do the um, ghost ship battles, uh, either Flame Heart or the Voyage. They drop a lot of storage crates now. Even skeleton ship battles too. Only you kind of that, need some supplies before that, you start those. That but, is uh, very nice. I uh, yeah we we've been doing it this way like we're not well, well, if you see flame heart we don't really supply a ship anymore just you know just to get the first few waves done yeah. and after that you're set because they they give you so many planks so many cannonballs yeah. um yeah. yeah so it's that's just doing the that event is really good to uh, to get your supplies up all right yeah. let's go to the uh final community wish and this one is from the Ashen Hunter and he wants a new weapon. Um, so not per se a boring X, but his suggestion is a dagger. So how do you feel about that? A dagger as a new weapon? Um, well, first of all, I like the name Ashen Hunter. That's actually, <laughs> if I had the option to name my ship, that's that that's that's a ten. Ah, for the name I ship, think but... it's already taken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So a dagger would be. Uh, I, I think that'd be that'd be a cool option for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if there'd be enough. Uh, difference between a dagger and the sword they currently have. Yeah, um, it could be it could be faster. Yeah, um, but with less of a range. But on the other hand, the DPS would be still around the same sword, maybe. 
again yeah. lots of uh, balancing for the insides to figure out if they're gonna do it like that yeah i mean one thing you could do is like you're saying earlier with the boarding axes mm -hmm. have it as a pickable or an item like a a blunder bomb or a fireball yeah like you could you could just pick them up and yeah consumable you know you mm -hmm. can hold up to five or ten or whatever and you could you could have it so that you know you throw it and suddenly you just get damaged you have no idea where and it don't make any sound you yeah know, you, could, you could have some kind of like silent silent mode where it's ninja you know, star that'd again, be awesome that would be well, again that'd be great for trolling very again, you know? ninja stars <laughs> yeah, yeah well but i mean a throwing knife it could be whatever I yeah mean, i'm just I, would, I just said Ninja Star, but that would be cool. I like, it would be cool. I, I would like that too. <laughs> I mean, and imagine... if you, it, it, can, it can get stuck in the wood, like, ting, and yeah, kind of, you know, it simmers a little bit. You can um, pick it up again. Y yes, indeed, you can pick it up again. That would be sweet. Uh, you need to hold X, of course, otherwise it would be too fast. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, that that's a good one. I would like that as an extra throwable weapon, and it could take a spot. You know, a blunder bomb spot or something like that, so you don't for sure. you know, have too many throwable weapons or something like that. But you know, let's leave yeah. it to the insiders to balance that stuff out. I mean, um, imagine hiding up in the crow's nest and just like you know, chucking knives, like raining knives down <laughs> somebody. Yeah, that'd be I. Oh my god, that'd be a lot of fun. Twenty twenty percent <laughs> damage. Cool. You get five. You hit all five. Yeah. You're dead. Twenty percent. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And then oh. if you miss, it sticks where's, into the wood. Where's and rare? You can pick it up again. Yeah, yeah, and then you can yeah. sprint, sprint, run, throw. You can throw. Sprint, oh, there we go. Pick it up, throw. <laughs> oh my god, it's gonna be lost that... by hearts trying to get some strategies with that. <laughs> that, that. Okay, they need to add that. This is this is sounding yeah, better. Yeah, it's, it's done. Uh, I, yeah. it's, it's funny because again, we read it in the novel. Like, there's also a lot of mentions of daggers there. Uh, let's not forget that Ramsey's also stepped in the bag with three daggers. Yeah. Right? So maybe those were throwable. We don't know. Uh, maybe it was just one guy with three with three daggers. Oh, I don't know. That's too much speculation. Um, but there are already daggers in the game that we use. Uh, like every time we vote like for an emissary or for a voyage, we already throw uh, down our daggers. So daggers are in a way already in the game. So that's a argument against why they should add more daggers. Um, but nonetheless, it's a great idea. I would like it. Yeah. That Anything would... else you guys want to add to nope. the dagger Just topic? Just put it in. Just yeah, exactly. <laughs> we want it. I, I, That'd be so cool. Uh, so thanks, Action Hunter, for that. That's a great suggestion. So uh, yeah, thanks again for everybody who uh, who posts their wishes in the community tab. I really like some interaction from my subscribers. I love it. Um, but now let's go to another one of your wishes. Then. So we need more options for pirate legends as far as like stuff they can buy. Like, um, All right. I'm I'm not uh, I'm not a huge fan of like the purple outfits you get when you're pirate legend. But um, mm. you know they they need more. I think uh, stuff that's exclusive to pirate legends. Like um, even like tall tales, they need like a pirate legend tall tales, oh, yeah. and they need different. Um, different voyages you know it, i you get the feeling like when you do finally hit pirate legend you grind away and you finally get there and you're like okay now what and then it's like okay More now grinding. we have to do the exact same thing <laughs> that we've been doing and it's it's a uh, bit of a letdown you know um mm. like i i remember when i first became pirate legend it was kind of cool mm. that now i can actually have the option of opening up like the floor in the tavern yeah, and it felt so that cool sweet. that mm -hmm. feeling that now I have the ability to do it. It just felt so cool and going down there. I mean, I've I've been down there before. Other people had opened for me, but mm -hmm. you know, now that I can open it myself, that yeah, was you a really cool feeling. I, yeah. yeah, and I think I think they could recreate that feeling with um, you know, other options like oh, now I can finally buy this voyage or uh, I guess yeah. they, they have the Athena voyage. But like if they added some more voyages or like a tall tale, you know, like now that I'm Pirate yeah. Legend, now I can do this tall tale. That's like super cool, you know. Or uh, spend a little bit more time on, on, on the tall tale and make it so that it's kind of one of those things that's sought after, you know. Like, yeah, you know, I want to get to Pirate Legends so I can do this really cool tall tale because, you yeah. know, you get... And a tall tale that's only, you know, that, that, that fits into the lore. Like, this tall tale is only for Pirate Legends. Yeah. So that would yeah. be a really sweet. And it just needs to be one, right? It doesn't need to be a series, just one tall tale that's, you know, yeah. quite sizable. Yeah as a nice little extra and no, i totally agree with that having said yeah. that they did add more cosmetics uh for part legends they still do it from time to time yeah uh, like the um, ships weren't there in the beginning uh right 
I right. think maybe wait, was the ghost ship there in the beginning? No, it wasn't, right? No. Nope. Yeah, that later. Yeah, so they do so add they've more had, stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess right now they have the purple outfit. They have the ghost outfit that the they added and all, quite all the recently. weapons and clothing and a lot of yeah. stuff is locked behind accommodations, which I really like. So you you constantly rewarded for doing stuff as a pirate legend. Yeah. Uh, even though it's still you know more of the same, but still. Um, so that's that's cool. Uh, the, the, it's definitely getting better. But I, I get what you're saying. It needs to be a little bit more special, like. Something that's yes, that's why I want to be by legend because now there's not really unless you really like cosmetics, of course, but there's not really a need to get to right. pirate legend. Right. Um, like maybe naming your ship, like hey, you're a pirate legend. You you have enough reputation now go. that you're able to name your ship. Like something like that would be sweet. And you know they kind of have uh, a place for it in the hard art too. Um, at the end of the uh, yeah. dock, so could be sweet. You know, that that would actually be very cool. You know, like if you're spy glassing a ship and all of a sudden, you know, with the little sound it makes, you know, you get the little, uh -huh. the little like um, words that pop up on your screen saying, this is, you know, black, Witch's ship. You'd be like, Oh yeah. no, this is, this is going to be a pirate legend now. Cause he named his ship, you know? Indeed. I think, yep. I think yep. that'd be cool. That's yeah. That's going to be amazing. And of course, uh, paintings of Louise O'Connor. Of course, that should be uh, oh uh, legend exclusive as well. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just trying to sneak it in there. <laughs> so let's go to. Uh, we're done with the community wishes. Um, so we're going to go to a wish of mine. Uh, like that painting is not a real wish, of course. Um, but one of my wishes is uh, the more uses from the ritual scrolls, because we're now um, limited to buying one a month. But we can still get them, you know, from skeleton ships and, and stuff like that. Uh, but we only use it for the um, uh, Fort of the Damned. So, which is a bit weird because it's, it's a ritual skull. It's not a Fort of the Damned skull. It's a ritual skull. So I would like to see more uchits of of that skull, like a loot that you can use. Like they 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 they're, they're doing it more, like with the new um, you know flamethrower skull. Uh, but why not go back to the ritual school and add something more for it? Um, even it could even be just for the damned again. But maybe if you use more ritual schools, you get more loot, but also more of a challenge. Or uh, I don't know another world event you can activate with a ritual school or a certain vault that you can only open when you have like two or three ritual schools. Um, so stuff like that, like more usage uh, from your loot. That's what I want. The ability is spawning a kraken with a ritual skull. <laughs> yeah, sure, why not? We, I wouldn't know how, how that would work gameplay wise. Yeah, um, not 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 well, I would think. <laughs> Maybe, uh, yeah, but something like that. Or when you have like like five ritual skulls, you place them on certain spots on your ship, and you can trigger something while sailing, or you will decrease the chance of getting kraken. For example, if you have like like four ritual skulls that you're proud yeah. of. It's going to be like different places where you can place them. Stuff like that. Like uh, yeah, I'll exactly. leave the real the real idea thinking over to, to other people. But uh, yeah, some more uses for uh, for ritual skulls for sure. How do you feel about that, Unibal? They would have to increase the frequency, but they do need another... Or not, or not, because... Uh, or your ship goes faster. Otherwise, goes... yeah, otherwise everybody would, would be fine with ritual skulls. So either you, sometimes she gets a lot of ritual skulls in the session, sometimes she don't. So that's what I think is the beauty of safety, is like every session is, is different. True. But I think they do and need to yeah. do another event, like, for the damned. Um, yeah. And they could use ritual skulls for that. Yeah, you know, you're right. I, I feel that, that way too. Because four of them is still, you know, it gets people together. If, if that scrolls up, people will go to that. So that's a. Uh, Before the Dam was probably their most them. successful addition to the game. Yeah, it, it was. One of the. Was, yeah, yeah, one of the. I've got to say, I really like the ghost ships too. I'm really enjoying those. Um, yeah. Yeah, but the Four of the Dam for their overall vision of having uh -huh. pirates interact with each other was yeah. probably the most successful thing. Yes, that, indeed. That still to this day, right? Of... Still to this day. Yeah. It, it, it gets but it's getting a little bit old, and content wise, it's mm -hmm. getting old. They need to add something else that brings yes. that same element. I totally agree with that. So, uh, that was one of my wishes. So, let's go to one of yours again, uh, Slim. All right. So, um, yeah, I think um, 
you know, with the Fort of the Damned, it really brought people together. And you have like, you'd see a lot of times you have like multiple crews clearing the Fort of the Damned, you know, when it first came out. Mm-hmm. And I think, I, I really think they should increase the server size to uh, 10 ships. Mm-hmm. And I, I think it, because right now you can, you can go a whole session and not see a single ship or maybe just see one in the distance. And mm-hmm. uh, I think having more ships and more interaction with each other, I think that would be, that'd be a good thing, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, but is that is that really the solution? Like, let's be honest, is that really the solution? Getting more ships, in, well, m- enabling the server to handle more ships, because yesterday I was on a server uh, with my crew, and there was only one other ship, and we stayed in that server for about eight hours, and it was the entire session. It was us and that other sloop, and we didn't see anybody else, and we constantly checked, you know, the, the emissary tables and. No, it was still at one slip doing the uh, Athenas. So, so if you would increase this the capability of that server, it still wouldn't matter. It still would be two right. ships in in that server. So, is that really the solution? Well, you get more ships there. They probably wouldn't have opened up the server you were on. You know what I mean? Like, because yeah, you, you would have been assigned to another server when you first went into the game. Like there, okay. you know, there's other mechanics. You know what I mean? Like, um, they would decrease the number of servers by increasing the server population so it may mm-hmm. balance out but yeah i mean i know that i get what you're saying but why'd you leave a sloop mm. up for eight hours mr nice guy <laughs> oh we sunk them no we, we, we sunk them no we were we're, we're, we're actually uh, I'm, I'm a ruthless pirate uh we wanted to sing them but oh my god do you want to hear a story <laughs> yeah let's go do you want to hear the story why i didn't sink a ship yeah uh okay so we were pl- we were playing with, with one of my friends and she uh, she wanted to do a massive haul. So we were constantly doing event, 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 just hoarding, hoarding loot. And only when the ship, you know, was near us, we would decide to fight it. But if it wasn't near us, we just focus on getting treasure because uh, we wanted to spell out certain words on the beaches. Uh, and we just needed a shit ton of treasure for that. So that's the reason why. And in the end, we, we, we tried to find them again once we're done with our spelling. Uh, but they left the server. What'd you spell? Sadly. I I was kind of scared to ask that. I was gonna be like, <laughs> should I ask what the certain words were? Uh, well, we did one. One of these was was a dick, of course, of course, <laughs> of course. Like you're not too old for that, right? There's, there's like this one age when you're somewhere when you're a teenager when it doesn't become funny anymore. But when you're back in your twenties, it's it's funny again. So, anyways, <laughs> um, so we did want to make a dig, but um, now she's starting her own uh, her own thing. Um, so she wanted to spell her name of her um, her potential her channel or how she wants to get known uh, as a content creator. So, and that was Rage Cage, by the way. So we spelled that out, and then we wanted to do other words too. Um, but we spent an hour. Like I'm not joking. We spent an hour spelling out one word. So uh, we were like, yeah, f- it. <laughs> we were so bored by then. So we just sold everything. Maybe we're going to do more words in the future when we do a massive haul. Um, but for yesterday, that was uh, that was it. Anything else you want to add to uh, increasing servers to 10 ships? Because I, I feel we have some more to talk about that, right? Yeah, I think um, I think that'd be a, a great option. Um, another thing, you know, you, you got to keep it to keep in mind is like you know you got these server takeovers where they'll you know get yes. all six ships and they'll alliance it yeah they suck i think yeah exactly if you do this if you're listening you suck <laughs> <laughs> i think with um with an increase you'd also have to bring some kind of uh like a alliance cap where you know you can only alliance three ships so yes. you know if, if you have two ships alliance you got to really consider like okay this ship wants to make an alliance with us should we allow them to make an alliance or should we I... let that spot open for another ship or you know or should we kick the other guy off maybe the other guy hasn't been hauling any loot in so maybe we should just get rid of him or you know and then yeah. also you could have like the battle of the alliances you know you could have yes you know your alliance versus another alliance you know i think yes. that would be a that that would lead for some really interesting fights just because of the mechanic where you know if you sink you'll spawn close to your alliance ships so if you were like you know 3v3 versus 3 in the ocean somewhere if you sunk you'd spawn pretty close by the fight and i th- i think mm. that would lead to some very epic battles where you, yeah. know, you see lots of like one-on-ones and you know somebody comes in and like third parties it you know 
But you yeah. know, having an alliance versus alliance, I think that would be that would make for some epic sea battles. You know. Yeah, I It'd totally be... agree with that. It, it would also stop alliance services servers. Sorry. Yeah. Um, because you can't you can't have a, a ten ship alliance because the maximum number is I don't know four or three or again I mean Greg yeah. figured it out what's the right right what's the right number. Um, but you cannot do a full server alliance. It doesn't work anymore. So yeah. um, you always have to compete over that treasure. Which and, and if that's the case, I totally agree with big alliances because there's also another big alliance that's gonna f you up. Yeah. So um, yeah, I do I do really like that um, because when alliances just got introduced to, everybody was thinking, oh right, nice. Then we can do alliance against alliance, and the seas are gonna be you know heavy. Uh, with combat, but that eh, didn't really happen. Um, but if you, you know, if you make a cap for it, like an alliance cap, um, yeah, yeah, you will get more fights between alliances. Plus, um, uh, you you think twice about who you allow to your alliance because are you going to help this, this little noob out? Yeah, you could do that, or you could go, you know, make an alliance with this um, tryhard and and win. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. It could be fun. So I, I totally agree with that on the lines cap. Like even for six ships, because that's the limit now, right? Isn't it? Yeah. Six ships yeah, in the server? Ships, yeah, yeah. If any any size. Yeah, make, make a cap of three. And and yeah. that would be a great improvement, I think. I, oh, think, wow. I think so too, yeah. They're not How do you feel about it. that? You they're, know not, they're not going to do it. <laughs> no. And why is that? Why is that? Because they, they want the player base to play the game how they want to play it. You know, so they, they want to open sandbox it, and I don't think they want to limit. Well, know. I want to play with an Uzi. So why is well. not an Uzi in the game, right? Yeah. I mean, imagine how awesome that'd be. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but they're not going to they're, 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 they're not gonna do it. Hmm. They won't cap I, alliances. I, they want people to play the game in a way. Like, they want people to be able to create these servers. I mean, that's part of the game. Yeah, create other stuff then. Create alliance battles because we don't have that anymore. Yeah, like, I mean, like, what, what's, more so, what's more exciting, an alliance battle or everybody catching yeah, battle, alliance uh, battle. treasure together? Just check out my yeah. last video. Me and Slim, we alliance <laughs> with the other sloop and we fought <laughs> yeah. an, an alliance of galleons. That alliance was... battle. <laughs> See, that, right. that's the kind of thing right there. That, yeah, that's yeah. so cool, you know? That was one of the neatest experiences I've had, you know, I think. Yeah ever you know that was us awesome. and that other ship and yeah just fighting that whole yeah that so, that was see that that's the kind of thing i think yeah. they should try and implement in the game you know i mean i, 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 I get think the with idea, more ships yeah. yeah yeah with more ships you know it, i think it happened more often you know i think All it right. would we'll see but yeah we do what we want we, we just don't agree how to get there <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so uh but i do, I do agree. if they, if they can do it with more ships but i don't know the main the main problem for me is i just want to be, be able to see more ships on the server because yeah nowadays like six server ships six, six oh sorry six ship servers are are pretty rare still so we'll see what the uh, right solution for for increasing that is yeah like next wish, that's another one of mine, is uh, presets. I don't really think I need to explain what presets are, but basically means like right now when you have your loadout, either weapon loadout or your clothing or your ship, you need to select it piece by piece. Um, with a preset, you just make a preset, and every time you click that preset, you know you get all the cosmetics associated with that preset. So do it for your guns. Uh, for, sorry, do it for your weapons, do it for your clothing, do it for your ship, especially your ship, because come on, uh, that's that's what you always do when you start up. You just you know go go deck your ship out. At least that's what I do, uh, and fight with my crew about it because you know I'm I'm a bitch when it comes to cosmetics. Um, so yeah, presets. I would really uh, like to see that. Um, how do you guys feel about presets? I think I think presets would be awesome. You know, you could have your your tuck outfit all set up so like one click and you'd be in your tuck outfit or yes you know your your party outfit or your your flex outfit <laughs> with all your uh with you all your sea dog outfit. stuff on and yeah yeah you know you, <laughs> um yeah and it, back in the day where back when they added um the emissaries you know they kind mm -hmm. of hinted towards having a preset so you'd have like all your clothing together and, and i was really excited about it until they came out and it turned out that you could just put on your one piece pajama suit there. Yeah. And it wasn't yeah. it wasn't really a preset. It was just a, a no. full one piece. 
but yeah, like, I think I, I do like even... costumes, but not the same as yeah. princess, of course. Yeah, yeah. No, I th- even they... your ships. I th- I think that'd be an awesome addition where you could have I... like you know your black ship or like your your sneaky yeah. ship. Yeah, you, you can know. you can you can name them in the menu. Right. So right. when you select your preset, it's all is also you know has the name of that ship. So you have right. your Black Pearl preset, which is also called the Black Pearl in the super nice font. You can have your Salty Hippo preset. Yeah. Um, so that's, uh, yeah, give it give it to us. And they actually are going to do it, so I don't want to discuss this all that much um, because they have confirmed that the presets are going to have to happen in the future. Uh, it was during one of the streams. I can't remember which stream it was. A couple of while, a decent amount of months ago they said it. Um, so they confirmed that it's on the roadmap. Only the person in question did not know where it was on that roadmap. So it is coming. Only we don't know when. Next so, update. Uh, so yeah. Coming next update. <laughs> Man, I sure hope so. Like like stuff like that. Like I I rather have you know quality of life improvement, focus on presets and naming your ship than than an entirely new world event or something like that. I rather yeah. have something like that. First. Oh yeah, I, I think there's so much stuff they can add. You know, along yeah. those lines. Yeah, for, yeah, indeed. For those quality of life uh, improvements. But if you get more quality of life improvements, you're just going to get all the people crying. Where's my new content? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Is that, is that really an argument right now? Because yes, like, the last two updates... It's always going to be an argument. <laughs> Do you know the human being? Uh, well, I'm a human being. <laughs> I I'm want I'm more. Really happy with Give me more. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> maybe, maybe you Americans. Maybe yeah, yeah. it's American it's, thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm, Schlecker this out of an animal scene. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, so, uh, anyways, let's go to the next wish, and uh, again, is uh, one of yours, Slim? Um, yeah. So I think that you make events uh, more valuable. You know, like you, you think of um, back in the day when, when. Uh, forts were the only event on the seas you know you mm-hmm. had your, your three main events um it was your kraken your ship fleet and then skull forts and like people would server hop until they found a skull fort you know it, oh, and yeah. that was the big thing you know um i mean nowadays obviously they've kind of got left behind but like they should make they should make events to where you know they're they're quite valuable like right now it's quite easy to sail around um undetected you know, flag gold hoarders, emissary flag, and just do a bunch of gold hoarding. And, mm-hmm. and that's very valuable. But I think they should, um, they should make it so that if you're just doing quests, that's not as valuable as doing a world event, you know? Like mm-hmm. defeating Flameheart. Make it so that, like, when you see Flameheart up there, there's going to be somebody there because it's, it's too valuable not to pass up, you know? I've been on lots of servers where you can, do, you can go camp out at a skull fort for a very mm-hmm. long time and no one shows up or just camp out at the Fort of the Damned. Yeah. Or even you see a Fort of the Damned up and you're like, oh, good, I can go steal a Fort of the Damned. You go over there and no one's there. So I think, well, maybe mm-hmm. they just sunk, they'll be back. And I go and hide on the island and wait and wait and wait. And no one ever shows up for like, you know, an hour or something. It's, mm-hmm. um, I think they should make events where it's, uh, it's, it's more, it's kind of a high risk, high reward, you know. Um, you know, if yeah. there's an event up and somebody's doing it, well, you know that there's going to be a lot of cash there. And, um, it makes it, you know, obviously a high risk because everybody knows you're there and then, you know, but a high reward as well. Mm-hmm. I think that would, that, that would increase the, um, the whole player interaction as well. You know, you wouldn't mm-hmm. have people just trying to like, you know, catch Ruby splash tails or something. <laughs> I, um, I'm not sure if I agree actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I feel now I feel like most of the events are pretty valuable. Like even the skeleton ships, like not a lot of people well, do them, but they give a lot of treasure. And with the flame right. art event, if you doesn't matter what emissary you're flying, well, except Athena's maybe, but if you're flying like Order of Souls or Gorlos or anything, you will get to grade five for just doing the battle, and you get a shit ton of uh, loot, which is worth you know two point five multiplier because you got into grade five from one world event. Right. So I don't really agree with that. Maybe some more treasure in the skull forts because they feel a little bit less. Maybe yeah. a little bit more treasure for the the Ashen Winds uh, event. But you know, over, overall, I'm I'm pretty happy with how much loot you get. Yeah. Well, I mean, not so much make events um, more valuable, but maybe make your uh, voyages less valuable. I mean, I remember there's time like trying to get the pirate mm-hmm. legend or get to Athena level ten. Where the yeah. only way to get Athena chest was to do an entire Athena run. Nowadays, it's super easy. You know, you get to level it is five. Easier. 
yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, and it still takes a while now to to get I mean, five. They, while, they balance that. They didn't they do the balancing with the gold hoarders, by the way. Like, if you are grade five, you get your emissary quest. Um, yeah, you can vote again for your flag, and halfway your emissary quest, you're already grade five again. So I'm not sure if that's entirely true, but you can, you know, loop it if you want. It's just doing right. emissary quest and getting grade five from that, and you have a bunch load of gold. We we did it yesterday, so so that yeah was quite interesting because you can get a lot of money for only doing gold orders. Actually, that's pretty right. valuable. Yeah, I mean, I feel when they when they brought out the emissary voyages and the mm -hmm. Athena voyages, they kind of devalued all the work that went into getting uh, originally going into getting yeah. Athena level ten. You know, it used to be yeah. you know it'd take you forty five minutes to get like one Athena chest. Now it's like like you look at like a gilded Athena when they would give us a gilded Athena with three Athena chests, <laughs> that was insane you know yeah and nowadays if you had a gilded athena it's it's still good but like i could i could crank out three athena chests or like the same worth of three athena chests real quick you know yeah and uh i think they should have what they should have done is had that so that you know it'd be world events that would allow you to get you know high athena rep or you know high gold hoarders rep or something you know yeah but yeah, maybe, maybe. A what's, what's your take on this, you boy? Been quiet. Yeah, I'm the audio engineer. <laughs> nah. I'm tracking all the audio. <laughs> do 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 you think events are valuable enough compared to the uh, the skull fort? No. Um, mm -hmm. I think you know it would be maybe they should add a chance of an Athena drop in these random events, which might you mm -hmm. know maybe it's like a twenty percent chance that Athena happens. Um. That'd be cool. Um, as far as gilded, I think uh, gilded voyages, yeah, have lost their appeal because Athena's kind of almost have lost their appeal, other than in For the Damned, and not because of the value. It's just because of the prestige of getting the Athena from the For the Damned. Uh -huh. Um, but maybe in these gilded's, they actually increase the value of the Athenas. Like they they automatically have like a two times multiplier on them. Uh, they're mm. special. They're glowy. Um, yeah, but yeah, I, I do think there is maybe a, a lack of incentive. And I think the only, you know, as slim is saying that there's lack of value in there. And, and I believe that's, uh, if there was more value, I, I think there are, mm -hmm. actually is plenty of gold that come from these events, but there's, there's no more mm -hmm. incentive. Um, so mm. if you increase the value, Audations? You increase the incentive. Yeah, nobody does accommodation except for you. I do accommodations. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's, that's my main goal. Like, what are accommodations? Like we're, yeah. we're swimming in millions of millions of gold. We don't need gold. We don't really need the rap, not really. So so we go for accommodations. And yeah, I love I going for accommodations. Poker table. So uh, the gold. I'm having the gold. so much fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I get the I get the argument that these things have to have more value. Uh, mm. As far as gold worth, I think they're fine, but there is no more incentive or another additional value. So there needs. So to how be, would you increase the incentive? I don't know. Maybe the, give it a, a twenty percent chance of Athena drop at a school for it or something. Um, mm. Something like that. It's not that bad actually. Um, yeah. but I, I do feel skull forts are being overlooked. I do feel the skeleton fleets are being overlooked. Um, yeah, that's true. By the way, I yeah. rare said that that skeleton ships that's at least uh, the only event, which is weird. Like when I play, I have nothing against skeleton fleets, I actually really like completing them. Um, but but when I play, I you know, I do the other events, and then I don't know, kind of. My ship never comes near a, a a a skeleton fleet for some reason. I don't know. Even though I don't, I do want to do them. So I don't really know how it works. But well, to be fair, like the the ghost ships and uh, are, are way more fun for me. Um, plus the Ashen winds now, the the Ashen lords. Like yo, those are new accommodations. I just want to get like skeleton fleets. Don't give me any accommodations, right? Yeah, but the Ashen so lords maybe is that's so hard reason. solo. I mean, it's just. Yeah, why do you do it solo? I said in my review, you're stupid. If the you Ashen Lords are easy solo. You just go camp on the island, wait for somebody else to do it, kill that person, <laughs> take their skull, and run. Yeah, but solo I, still takes like forty minutes to an hour. Like I, the last time I did it, it mm -hmm. I only I only died like four times during the, and I mm -hmm. only started dying during the the final phase. But it mm -hmm. just takes so Indeed. long because you have to run. I mean, the mobs. I mean, there's like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, 
And in the beginning, well, before you're at third phase, you you think oh, I'm doing well, it's quite yeah. easy, I know the patterns. And then you get the third phase where where everything you know smacks you down. Yeah. It just takes forever. <laughs> and you're like, why the hell did I even start this? But oh well. Um, so I I I really try not. And the to rewards do that, so, suck. Oh well. In my opinion. <laughs> <sighs> do they really like? We've talked about they... this before. You don't get you don't get emissary rep, so uh, your multiplier is less. But it is all action loot, right? Plus, you get that skull, which is pretty, pretty powerful in PVE situations. So, eh, I don't know. Five it is know. great for trolling. Yeah. Oh, it is. It is lovely. All right, we're um, we're getting near the end of our uh, time right here. So uh, let's see. We're gonna do two more wishes, I think. Uh, yeah. So I'm gonna do a wish, and then we'll finish with uh, your last one. And after that, we'll go to the uh, messages in a bottle because we have quite some questions to uh, to answer as well. So, um, yeah, one of my wishes, my final wish, is for Arena, and uh, I, uh, man, I, I can't rant about this, but I, I try to keep it civilized um, because when Arena just got announced or when it was implemented in the game, Joni promised us that they're going to give Arena as much attention as Adventure. Uh, we're uh, a couple of a couple of moments further in the future, and it still really hasn't happened. So they changed one game mode, uh, which is still broken, or for galleons especially. So if you don't agree with that, you're wrong. Um, I had some, you know, some of my to try and say, nah, it's not broken, but really, let's be honest. Like the way you win the game mode is by, you know, um, getting cannon shots and ranking up points. If you go for the chest, uh, you, you, you're not ranking up points enough to win. So you're not playing it as intended by the developers. So in my opinion, uh, that's broken. Um, so also, the loading times are still pretty worse, and they haven't really added anything. Like last update, they, there was nothing for Arena. And the update before, they increase the uh, storage capacity which was nice don't get me wrong that's nice it needed to happen but we only yeah we, we rarely get updates for arena and if we do get them they're really really small so my wish is for more game modes in arena uh or any attention to arena at all if if i'm being honest so uh, give us more variation um give us some more events too uh maybe some competitions um you know something to get us excited about arena again yeah they, there's so much stuff they could add into arena like they could have a capture the, the flag mm -hmm. uh, game mode where each ship has a flag on an island near them you know there's there's just so much stuff they can add yeah you know, lost ship standing a mega Royale. Spawn in. yeah just, or, or, or bring the old one back right with the multiple chests i, right. I like doing that it was i had nothing against it uh it was sometimes less exciting but it was a different strategy you need to use so if you have different game modes that use different strategies uh, each time, uh, even though it's just you know little alterations, let's be fair, but you know it's, you still need to think a little bit differently. Um, it gets more varied and it gets more exciting. So it's not like the same experience every time you play Arena, which would hopefully increase the excitement for it, which would hopefully increase you know full service and all, all yada, yada, yada. Because right now it's kind of dying out, right? So uh, that's the feel I get. I mean, I love Arena, but lately I'm just playing Adventure. I don't, I don't go to Arena at all anymore. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So the excitement, you know, the, the excitement of competition is is you know slowly um, fading away from Arena. Because when I play now, it's just to get my I have reach kills because I suck at that uh, sniper rifle. Um, but this is one of the only things why I go to arena. I'm not playing the objective. I'm, I'm just killing people, which, uh, well, it's not the point of arena because uh, the competition is the point of arena. So I don't know. Right. Remove commendations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Yeah. You got well, players like you like... ruining the arena experience, <laughs> trying to get your commendations, not playing it how it's intended. Well, you're a hypocrite because <laughs> you. Just before you said that, you know, you just play it however you wanted to play it, and that's what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. But no, but that's a good point because the, some of those kills are quite high, like 200. Well, I guess cannon kills you will get over time, but if you make accommodations that are not focused on playing the objective, then you get this type of behavior. 
So, uh, and that's why you see a lot of people just killing an arena and not playing the objective because they still need to complete those accommodations because they're done with their wins. So if you make accommodations, make sure they're catered around playing the objective so everybody's playing the objective. But, uh, oh, well, that's my take on it. Anything else you want to add about arena? Mega, you spawn in with mega kegs in the crow's nest. And if you don't like it, you just simply <laughs> grab your mega keg, toss it over the back of your boat if you don't want it on your boat. But yes, it's it's, uh-huh. it's yours to do it however you please. Yeah, but that's 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 a good suggestion. That could be game mode, right? Like explosion yeah. game mode. Like like yeah. you have <laughs> all kegs on or, ships or on the yeah. islands. Gun and that could be a game around mode around it. it. Yeah. yeah. See, yeah, that's yeah. how you make it exciting. Like you yeah. don't know what kind of game mode you're gonna get in. But uh yeah. oh well, hopefully. Hopefully they're doing that something because they ha- they do have a separate team, right? They have an arena team, or am I just crazy? What are they doing now? What what is the arena team doing now? Like adding more more storage stuff? Ask you know, Mr. Crates? Whaley. That's not. That's uh, well, they're Mr. contracted, Whaley? so you know we don't know their. They're on vacation. The yeah, that's true. They're not part of the core team, as far as we know. Um, but yeah. Oh well, I just hope for some more arena stuff. So, anyways, let's go to uh, the final wish, and that's uh, one of that is one of yours again, Slim. So, this wish would be, um, yeah, I, I think Uniball even would like this more than me, but a free cam option, um, and <laughs> I think uh, it'd have to be something similar to uh, what they have in Fortnite, to where like after you log off, after your session's done, you have the option of downloading your gameplay. And it wouldn't be the entire game. It'd just be like the rendering distance that you had the entire game. So, you know, mm-hmm. you can go back and you can free cam your past experience on Sea of Thieves. I think as a YouTube creator, that would be incredible, you know, because um, you could make such such cool cinematics and you could have, you know, just this epic fight, um, this epic fight. And you could have like the coolest shots and you could make you could make some really cool YouTube videos of uh, different experiences that you've had on the seas. Oh, you bet. It it would have to be something that you download after you log off, you know, so it wouldn't be exploited. But Mm -hmm. I think, I think a free cam option just for, just for the content creators, I think would be so welcomed, you know? And I I think like they're, they have the custom servers out now. And I think that's definitely going to be eventually something that they're going to add into the game for everyone to access and probably is going to have a free cam option in there as well. But, I think having a free cam option that you can download after you log off your session, you know, you could re- use it to recreate some really cool, some really cool moments and have some really cool YouTube videos, I think would be really, really neat, you know? Um, yeah. Cause I mean, some, some of the shots, like when you shoot yourself up in a cannon over top of uh shark bait cove or, you know, shipwreck bay, there's, there's some really cool screenshots you can take, you know, or mm-hmm. you're canning yourself up as two ships are fighting, you know, you, you get some really cool, cinematic views or like in the in the in that tall tale like the first one the introduction to sea of thieves there their last little cinematic shot there you know there's so much there's so much potential there for youtube creators to make some really cool content i feel that would be that that would be something that would really give this game a lot of life i think um and even it'd make youtube content more more appealing to for people you know because i mean Mm -hmm. the third the third party i mean the third person view after a while it gets old after a while you know and people are looking for ways to liven it up and i i think that would be um that would be one way to even give their game more recognition or more uh people get more people watching it just Exposure. because it'd be yeah. so much more watchable yeah yeah i can do top time top down analysis of how the battle went yeah stuff like that it could be really yeah. interesting and see how oh, he was his mistake because he went to the cannons instead of fixing and yeah, you can zoom in on him after the fact. That would be really sweet. Would we, yeah, you, you I think it would see. take a lot of memory. <laughs> well, it would, but I mean, you look at like uh, Fortnite, for example, and it was mm-hmm. one of those things where it, it, it would download just in a couple minutes, you know. Yeah, and I think it, depending on how long map, right? <laughs> right, but you're not downloading the entire map. You're only downloading your rendering distance. So, like, yeah, there is, true. you know. Say there's but, a couple but, ships but, fighting but, on the far. But, but your rendering is also where you're looking at. So if you're looking at the front, it doesn't render your back. Right. If you want to have a shot of your back, it does need to render, right? So how yeah. do you see that happening then? Well, yeah, honestly, I'm not sure. Because, um, like, 
I, I just know in the in the Fortnite game there they had mm -hmm. it would render 360 degrees around you so right. you could get out of your distance and then what would happen is you just have like the uh you'd, you'd zoom in on like you know a tree and it when you got there it'd just be a blob you know if you went too far away but it was right. 360 degrees around you and basically it was just enough to where you know in in sea of thieves it'd be just enough to where like if you get close to somebody they're gonna start paying mm -hmm. attention to you kind of yeah. is kind of the idea but i get it no, it sounds good. I, I would definitely want that. I don't know how feasible it is, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, if they can do it, I would really want that. They need it. Um, I, I could see some issues. Yeah. You know, if you had some eight-hour you know game sessions, that obviously would be a little bit much. Um, or you could make it so yeah. that you could kind of pick and choose, like you know, you want the last hour of your gameplay downloaded, or yeah, you know. indeed. Well, you have those options on Xbox, right? You notice too. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So uh, you can do oh, let's record only the last hour. Uh, right. Or make a clip of this, like this is the last 15 minutes, and then you can, you know, see it when once you finish your session, right? But it's already saved there for later. Right. Um, and you get access to it, you know, uh, at the end of your session when you log off your server. Uh, because uh, the way I'm, I'm I'm saying this, like you get why I'm saying this, obviously, um, because you can't do it during your your gameplay session, otherwise you could, you know. Sneak right. on other people's ships and see what they're doing, what they have. So you don't want want that sniping uh, going around. So it always right. needs to be after effect. No, that'd be cool. But then and also, um, because yeah, you do so much with it. And then in the custom yeah. servers, they need yeah. one hundred. Because yeah, well, that's the thing, right? Because they're doing the custom servers now. So are they? So no, that the custom you know, the custom servers are bare of... bones right now. Mm, I wouldn't know. I, would, um, I really wouldn't know. They're just. Uh, they they even said like on one of those things they're just bare bones. Um, right now, Cynical and Alcor are putting out videos of them mm -hmm. um, because people can access them through their codes. But um, oh yeah, yeah. But there's no free cams. They but they need it's 100 percent needed. There is no free cam. Oh, damn it. No, they can't even kick. Yeah, I, I think I heard that they can't even kick people out of their servers. <laughs> oh really? What? Yeah. Oh, uh, that's terrible. Yeah. All right, they all right. They need to. Uh, There's a yeah. lot that they need. I mean, that's that's, that's basic. What, I need you to don't be even need on, feedback from your community for that. I need <laughs> to be on know. this original alpha testing, and I'll put them to work. <laughs> yeah, I, I I bet you will. I bet you will. I honestly, one of the one of the big reasons I would like a free cam is just to see what Uniball could come up with. Honestly. <laughs> yeah. I'm about same. to go ham. Like I have some footage <laughs> I know, with me I and Liquorless. I'm about to go crazy with. Once I get settled. Oh, I hope so. Nice. I really hope so. I want, I want more videos from you, Well, No pressure. No pressure. All right. <laughs> so uh, that was, was also our last wish. Well, actually, we have more. Uh, but like I said before, I like to keep it a bit shorter this time because, you know, <clears throat> I need to edit all this shit. Um, so <laughs> let's go to our, uh, another section, and that's the message in a bottle. So in this section of the podcast, we will answer questions from our own YouTube community. These questions come from the comment section of the previous podcast. So, hey, let's open up some bottles. And the first bottle comes from Miyagi. Again, he was also one of the ones who uh, stated one of his wishes. Um, he has one question for us. He would like to see another boarding method for galleons and maybe a brick. He says, I think four people watching letters is a bit too much at times. And he would definitely... Um, uh, would add a little bit more of a challenge than just waiting with a blunderbuss. So he was thinking of a ladder at the back of the galleon. It would be difficult to reach, but it would allow for more interesting boarding. So how do you guys feel about that? I'm with him 100%. You know, that's <laughs> 100%. Because, yeah, like four guys staring down two ladders on a galleon is just too much. You know, mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot of times, but if you're solo slooping, you got a bunch of loot on and a galleon starts chasing you, it's very difficult. I mean, you can only sail into the wind so far until you get to mm -hmm. the edge of the map. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just they they need a way that you can board a galleon. You know, I, I think that would be. I think, Hi. you know, it's it's balanced out pretty decently, but I think mm -hmm. it would be balanced out very well. If, you, if there was, like, say, a ladder on the back that's a little bit more difficult to get to, but at least that way, you know, you, you can split your four guys up into, like, you know, at least... Your your op your your options of um getting on a ladder with only one guy watching it, it would be more more likely to happen, you know. Yeah, I, li you I like know? it. That's that's cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm not sure about how how to feel about it. 
Um, more boring That's because you be sail galleons. That would just put more yes. stuff on you. You'd be like, <laughs> oh, and now oh, I have to right. watch more ladders. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, so much easier in the past. <laughs> now I'm getting blown up. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next question. Unite. <laughs> uh, thanks, Miyagi, for that for that question. Uh, let's go to the other one. Uh, the next question is from uh, from Jordan. Jordan says, hey, Blubber, I was just curious, would you like to see the Hunter's Call emissary expanded? And if so, what would you like to see within the emissary itself, cosmetic-wise and content? This is a really good question uh, because I do want the Hunter's uh, Call emissary expanded. Um, I want emissary flex for it, and I want voyages for it. Um, so I would like to hunt uh, different types of beasts, and those could be, you know, like fishes, Parrots or snapping turtles, uh, like make them like monster locking, like you're not killing a cute turtle, but you know you're killing a badass uh, turtle with I don't know horns on his back or something like that. Not nothing too exotic, <laughs> still still nothing needs to exotic. look like a nothing too exotic. Uh, but I would like to see missions like that, um, like cosmetic wise, eh? May maybe the uh, the outfit that um, Merrick is is wearing. I don't know if that's in the game yet. Uh, maybe it is. Um, cosmetic wise, now I'm, I'm I'm pretty good. Maybe new figurehead. I do want a new figurehead for my hunter's call ship because uh, you know that swordfish is uh, not pleasing. <laughs> I want something yeah. else. So cosmetic wise, yeah, I don't really have that much wishes, but I do want them to have voyages uh, for hunting uh, various wildlife. And uh, hey, crank it up to uh, 75 um, because uh, it's a bit weird. Like. For 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 the hunter's call still being at fifty, so uh, anything you guys uh, would want want for the hunter's call? I just want to have to kill or have to catch five hundred ruby splash tails because <laughs> I mean yeah yeah I I think yeah they could definitely freshen up that a little bit you know and you know stop just making us have to catch a bunch of ruby splash tails you yeah you could have like you know you have to hunt down like some kind of rare species of animal or you know there's mm -hmm. There's quite, yeah, there's, there's, there's lots they could do there, you know, as far as yeah, new start content, a, there's start a special Megalodon event or something like that, or, yeah. or a sea serpent, add a sea serpent to the game as a new event, like, like, just like the Megalodon and the Kraken, but you can only start it by uh, getting a voyage from the uh, Hunter's Call. Yeah, they could add something that's not in the game, like um, a shrouded mm -hmm. ghost that you could go and get. <laughs> <laughs> uh, something like that. Maybe, maybe when you, once you re reach seventy-five, you get one mission uh, per person, once in a lifetime chance to get a shroud ghost. Maybe I don't know. I think I think there's gonna be a lot of criticism against that, but I don't know. Maybe something like that. Anything uh, you want to add to that, Unibal? Yeah, they they need to increase the right. I think fishing's dead. Um, but yeah. as far I love as... fishing. I, I like fishing. Of course you I do, because do you could just relax and fish while the other three people on your galley and do all the work. <laughs> no, 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 no. When I fish, I'm usually a so soloing. I just go tune out, mm -hmm. mellow out, grab a beer, and just uh, fish by myself. Uh, yeah. And I, I actually have fun doing that. Well, but maybe it's that's not just dead, me, maybe. For me, it is. But to get it to 75, <laughs> that's, I mean, that's going to be miserable. I mean, unless yeah, well, they I'm added. Sorry other content mm. other ways to get there other than fishing yeah yeah of course yeah, yeah of course they need that because more. no it, no i don't want to get to 75 i just fishing i know it was hard enough Ruby's for me to buy those 24 levels i needed to get to 50 you know <laughs> <laughs> that's <was> difficult <laughs> exactly all right so uh, i think we all agree that we want more stuff uh, for that some more interesting missions for sure um yeah. so next question comes from uh Oinaro. Uh, yes, only one question this time. Um, his question is, have you ever thought about bringing members of your community on a podcast? Um, and I can safely say, uh, before you ask that question, that idea never popped up. Um, like, I like to get other YouTube content creators on, on the channel. So, um, you know, I can promote them. They can promote me. Uh, it's just more interesting conversation-wise because, you know, they're all really big in the CFTs community. Um, and that kind of goes without saying, right? So uh, maybe uh, the, the thing you need to remember is that I have a lot of podcasts planned in advance. Like with some Shanty too, we've planned uh, on having him on, like I think three months ago, like when the uh, yeah. 
podcast with with Nicholas was there, right? We also wanted to have Slim Shanty on there too, but that would have been with four people, so that would be editing wise a bit too much. So we shoved Slim Shanty, you know, back to the uh, future, uh, if that makes sense. So, uh, and I've got other content creators as well, plus another episode with Uniball that's going to be planned and with Old Buccaneer. So really far in the future, there are already podcast plans. So if there is an added value of bringing a community member on the podcast, uh, then I would consider it. But uh, I need to really think about uh, if I want to do that, yes or no. But uh, but yeah, thanks for the question. I'm definitely going to think about it now. I We only have one more person left. And I saved him for the end because, as usual, it's the Luxor. And uh, he has 11 questions for us. So, 11. Are you guys 11? <laughs> yes. Luxor. I come think on, man. I'm, 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 I'm going to, well, they're all good. They're good questions. But I think I'm going to, I'm going to say it right now. Uh, I love answering questions, uh, but I'm also looking for ways to, to, you know, bring down the size of the uh, podcast uh, lengthwise. So, <laughs> Let's keep it at five the next time. So per subscriber, five questions per podcast. Like if you have more, you can ask them in the next podcast. Well, that's, um, that seems Ask reasonable all the questions, Luxter. You could put them on my, <laughs> on my channel. Go. And then I'll, then I'll bring them <laughs> yeah. up. I'd be like, well. Uh-huh. <laughs> there you go. This is the extra yeah, message like in the bottom. Yeah. Blibber. Maybe. <laughs> maybe we could, we could. Well, I was thinking maybe we can do a podcast with, um, uh, with only questions, uh, that's an idea yeah, that's you floating around like that. in my yeah, head. Yeah, because obviously yeah. there's be cool. time constraints, so we have to take that yeah. into consideration. Anyways, for now, we are going to uh, answer them, so let's get to it. Uh, his first question is, which of the Ashen Lords was your favorite from the event? And my answer is, uh, I, I don't really have an answer. They're all, they're all just the same to me. Uh, if I had to choose, I'd probably pick Alter Ratio because I like his name. Uh, I like his face, and he's. I think he's wearing bowls of rum around his body, so he likes to get drunk, and I can appreciate that. So, um, so yeah, alter ratio is my answer if I if I had to pick. My favorite Ashen Lords were the ones I stole from other crews. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> All right. I don't. Uni? I don't think there's a difference between them other than looks. Was no. There? Okay. No, not. Just they, they look they... different. They have different voice lines. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think they did and a really good job. There are two females and two the... guys. Yeah, I think I think Ray did a very good job on the cosmetics of them guys. They they looked they yeah. looked very good. Yeah, I do agree. And they look different, and they have different voice lines, which I which I really appreciate it. Even though Red Ruff sounds like a guy, even though she's a girl, but yeah. <laughs> oh well, you got a favorite Uniball? Uh, probably Warden Chi. Uh, how come? I don't know. All right. I think I faced Next them question. the most. <laughs> Because <laughs> it's the only right. one I could remember. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's, let's keep the tempo going. Uh, the next question is, what's your favorite tall tale? Uh, this, this is a good question. I think my favorite is probably the Harford Fire because I just I don't know. I like all the fire effects they've done. Um, the entire cave looks beautiful. It's only sad that you know you you do it for tall tale a couple of times and then you're never gonna experience it again. Well, you can if you really want to, but there's not really much point to it. Uh, also, the, you know, the voice acting and at the end with with Stitch um, uh, Jim was was quite nice, uh, and you get a lot of lore in in just one tall tale. So uh, yeah, I think I think that's my favorite. How about you guys? Um, my two favorite tall tales would be the Stars of Thief and Shores of Gold. The Stars of Thief because when you complete it, you get a spyglass that's square, which is the <laughs> yeah. only cosmetic in the game. Which is more than just a cosmetic. It actually changes how you how you play the game because it's a square wow. it's a square viewfinder. And then wow. yeah, and then Shores of Gold just because once you get um, once you get halfway done Shores of Gold, you get a checkpoint that you can add. And then once you get that checkpoint, you can activate the uh, Shroud Breaker on your ship at any time on any mm. server anywhere, which is a, a lesser known fact about Sea of Thieves, you know, because everybody you know, it used to be you had to sail to the Moral speak outpost to activate the shores of gold, but now once you've got that done, you can, like you, you can just start up a server and immediately activate your yeah. shroud breaker. I had a crew I was chasing who did that. I hate them. 
<laughs> I hate them. They got away yes. because they sell to the shores of gold and we didn't have the shower break around. So, yeah, I kind of need to get that checkpoint ready, actually. So, Amateur. I can use it too. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's your favorite Telltale, you know, well? I mean, all of them, but nine is, uh, is the best for me. Shores of the gold? Shores of Gold? Yeah, Shores of Gold. It's also nine. It because is. Of, the whole Telltale. It looks great. nice or, or, yeah, because everything. It's big. The whole thing. The, the yeah. whole, it's a big dramatic cinematic event i they should incorporate that island into the game more than just the shores of gold tall yeah. tale yep they should we've talked about this before in the podcast but yeah, yeah they really should all right um this next question is have you ever had a good experience from an open crew <laughs> yes i have <laughs> yes i have uh in the early days in the early days of sea of thieves not lately because in the beginning like i i had some real life friends uh that, that tried it out but they they quickly lost you know interest in it they, they thought it was lacking of content which you know was a fair argument in the beginning of the game let's be fair um but most of the crews i still with now are from left well not most of them some of them are leftovers from those early days when, when i was just doing open crews because i needed people to sail with um i did looking for groups too uh that's where i met most of the uh you know the diehard parts of my crew, like the really good players. I have some, you know, really good players in my crew. I've met them, most of them, through looking for group. Uh, but lately, I think since since yeah, I think since the skeleton ship update, so the second update, I have not been doing open crews anymore because uh, yeah, as you can guess, most experience aren't that uh, that great. <laughs> so yeah, but in the beginning, I have I actually had one guy who I met through Open Crew. He lives in London, and I actually visited him uh, in real life. So uh, so that's probably the, the best example I can give from a good experience to an Open Crew. I actually met somebody uh, thanks to Sea of Thieves. Did you steal any of his loot and then sell it in real life? Uh, I stole his girlfriend. Oh, no, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, um, uh, no, I didn't. We know no, that's a lie. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, thank you. I've... Um... I've done open crew just to see, just for, uh, just see what I'd come up with in entertainment stuff. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times you get these new players that aren't very good at the game and I'll just like join a sloop and, you know, they'll be struggling with something and it feels kind of cool just to help somebody out that's, you know, new to the game and you can show them a few tips and tricks and stuff. And, um, sometimes, yeah, yeah, I yeah, sometimes, I mean, some, sometimes, but, um, for the majority oh, of I... the time, open crew is kind mm -hmm. of terrible, I... but I, I actually did that too, because I got Pirate Legend as one, you know, one of the first guys who got Pirate Legend because you know I was playing the game a lot, um, and I did go to Open Crews just to lay down an Athena for people, and then I just left. <laughs> yeah. So I did do that. So so they had a good experience thanks to me, not the other way around. <laughs> How about you, Unibel? Yeah, I generally have decent experiences uh, with Open Crew. I remember one time I was going to try to troll people. I you know put in the sailor outfit, and, and then. I was going to do that whole thing. Well, you know, help them out. And then that big reveal. But anyways, I was with this other guy who had sailor outfit and then I see him go down below deck and he starts putting on his Athena gear for his big reveal. And then I just left. <laughs> <laughs> he came back to the top of the boat and I was gone. <laughs> um, All right. But yeah, I generally have good experiences if they have a decent mic uh, and they're willing yeah. um, to have fun. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Cool. Um, his fourth question is, what kind of non sea thieves slash rare games do you enjoy? I like that you say rare games, since I'm a bit, pretty big fanboy. Um, I actually play a lot of games. Um, on my Xbox, I only play Sea of Thieves and Borderlands at the moment. Uh, occasionally, I do some FIFA Piata or some, some other stuff, but mainly Borderlands and Sea of Thieves. Uh, I actually have a... I recently bought a Switch. Uh, and I've bought a retro console that plays NES, SNES, and Mega Drive games because I, I, I really like playing retro games. Um, to give some examples of games, um, not, I'm not going to say specific, but uh, franchises I do enjoy, which I'm always probably playing a game from that franchise, are the Metroid series, Donkey Kong Country series, Castlevania, Fire Emblem, uh, and Zelda. Yeah, I would say those are my uh, my favorite uh, franchises for sure. Um, so yeah, and, and right, I think I just completed Kirby's Adventure for the NES. 
Um, so that's the last non CFTs game I played and completed. So so yeah, how about you guys? What what else do you guys play? So for uh, non CFTs games, I play. Um, I don't play a lot of games. I play a little bit of Minecraft, which then I go and try and recreate uh, the galleon with Minecraft blocks, and then oh, nice. my home base. Yeah, you can it's make kind of... a video about that for your channel, man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It out there. I guess I play a little bit of Minecraft and not mm -hmm. honestly not a whole lot more than that. Uh, not much. I you know I like Battlefield, but Battlefield Five is poo poo. Um, so I haven't been playing <laughs> a lot of Battlefield. I used to play a bunch of Apex with um coworkers. Um, a little bit of Star Citizen, a little bit of Rust. Not very mm, good. Rust. Hardcore. Yes, because I'm a hardcore Who is? person. Who is? <laughs> um but yeah then i tr I downloaded grounded so i tried that oh yeah um and then i have far cry 5 i want to try that too because it was on sale i bought it for like 15 dollars got the 100 dollars package so anyways i can try that um but yeah it's mainly see if these but i want to branch out and try mm -hmm. some other stuff a little bit of a uh, tarkov i haven't played that in a while oh yeah so, yeah it's only pc right isn't it at the moment yeah yeah I, yeah, I thought so. Oh, well, so there you go. Th those are the other games we also play. Um, it says, following the theme of the previous question, what's some YouTube content you enjoy that's not CFTs or rare? Uh, I am actually subscribed to about 150 channels. <laughs> so I consume a lot of YouTube content. Um, I, can, I can get lots of them are about video games. I'm subscribed to all Arlo's and the Massacre, of course. Like, who is not? Um, I like Fat Earth videos uh, by people <laughs> making fun of Fat Earthers. I've got I've got some some uh, channels I follow, uh, some retro games channels, uh, news channels. Uh, who's this Uniball? I follow that guy too. This, this content sucks. Uh, and I also uh, a lot of astrophysics. I'm really into astrophysics and space exploration. So some of the channels are centered around that. And I also, one of my other hobbies is reading. So I'm also subscribed to a couple of uh, booktubers and uh, some channels that are solely podcasts uh, surrounded around uh, books uh, and mainly fantasy and science fiction in, uh, in that regard. Um, some music too, some ska channels, some punk channels. Uh, the list goes on. But uh, those are my main interests on YouTube besides uh, video games. How about you guys? What else do you guys watch on YouTube? Um, I like podcasts. Um, I do uh, a fair to like Joe Rogan, for instance. I like his podcast. Oh, yeah. uh, I, I listen to a lot of music, actually. I use YouTube for lots of music. And then um, really good uh, CFTs content like um, like Uniball and, you know, other people that you know make good CFTs content. I, I mm -hmm. was always enjoyable to watch that, you know, and uh, yeah, like gaming tutorials of uh, Minecraft builds. I guess I do a little bit of that. <laughs> I, I'm actually subscribed to to one one uh, Minecraft YouTuber too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah Jerry Craft. Don't know. If, oh, okay, Jerry okay, Craft. Yeah. Don't know if you know him, but he does uh, awesome epic builds, and I still like to, like to watch those, even though I don't play Minecraft all that much anymore. Yeah, yeah. You Union Ball? What do you watch besides CFT's content? Um probably Rust content. I like watching Rust. Oh, okay. Um I like good like from Frost. Um I don't know if you're familiar, but Frost is really good. He's a big influence on some, you know, his style, his cinematics that he does uh in Rust. <clears throat> uh huh. Yeah, mainly Russ, but just a lot of I mean the I'm looking at the people. I follow some tiny home movement channels. Mm -hmm. Tiny homes, I like those. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Those are addictive for some reason. I've, I I don't watch them, but I know people who do. Yeah, I really like it. I think one day I'll probably get one. Maybe mm -hmm. tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I hope so. I hope so. Um. All right. Yeah, that's about it. What do you think about adding new grogs to the game that do different things? For example, giving you jump boost or speed boots, but you also have the drunk effect at the same time. Uh, at the taverns, they keep talking about different kinds of flavors of grog, and I think it might be a nice addition. So yeah, different grogs having different effects. How do you guys feel like that? And you guys can answer first. I think uh, I think that'd be kind of um, not too practical, but it'd be very comical and kind of fun 
you know, there's yeah. combinations for drinking with other crews in the tavern and stuff. I think, I think that just adds to the game because right now the grog, like nobody really drinks other than just to troll people. But yeah, yeah having having different effects would be kind of, yeah, it, it'd just be something kind of fun. I think. Mm. Oh, I like you. I agree. Well, yeah, that'd be fun. It would, yeah, it would just yeah. bring a little spice here and there, which would be fun. I agree. You can do pub crawl, you know, so it takes everything within an hour. That could be accommodation, for example. It could be fun to try out with your crew, see if you can visit all the taverns within an hour or something like that. And taste everything. We do have that in the Netherlands, but you guys do that too, right? But during Carnival, we have like these ties, and on the ties, there's a list of different uh, uh, bars and pubs, and you, you buy the tie, and then you can visit all those pubs that are on the tie, and then you get free free beer, and you can, you know, get drunk. <laughs> yeah. all right so something like that oh, man. uh i'm thirsty for beer okay do you think rare should try to detach the base game from arena maybe have it like fortnite battle royale which save the world i don't know save the world it's also super annoying to have to play the same annoying games for arena for 240 wins for the pilot legend cosmetics well uh, my answer to that is uh, get good. No, I'm just I'm joking. <laughs> uh, I, I do get 240 wins. It's, it's a lot, even if you're an average player. Like I have a lot of um, fights in my crew that are really good. I'm I'm decent myself, but I'm not like super good. But if I'm in a crew with better players and I'm decent myself, yeah, we win a lot. So th those 240 wins weren't that hard for me personally, but it's still a lot. It was still a time investment. Um, but your main question is, do you think Rash should try to detach the base game from Arena? My answer is yes. Uh, but Arena should be working properly first. It should be a really smooth experience. After that, you can make Arena free to play. And if people are interested in the game mechanics of uh, Arena, they can maybe purchase uh, the entire game to play Adventure Mode as well. Uh, having said that, this is I haven't thought about this a lot. Uh, so maybe I'm missing some stuff that, you know, makes it impossible or maybe make it not a good idea. Um, how do you guys uh, feel about that? Detaching Arena <clears throat> from uh, Sea of Thieves? I would say no, don't detach it from Sea of Thieves. Just make it better, you know. And mm -hmm. uh, two, 240 wins is a lot of wins, but unfortunately they can't change it because there's been people that have ground 240 wins and it would devalue the stuff they got from doing that. So. Mm -hmm. And they're not they're not going to change it because that would kind of. Yeah. But yeah, you played kinda... for a long time too, right? That's the RD behind. A lot of commendations are really hard to get, but the yeah. idea of CFDs I mean, is I'm... it's a game you play years and years and years, so you have years and years yeah. to do, finish those commendations. Yeah, I mean, I'm so... still not at 240 wins, but yeah. And what, what, what's your opinion, Unibal? Do I you got, think I uh... got like three wins? Boom. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I keep forgetting that. Like, we should not ask your opinion about anything arena related. Yeah, well, no, no, so no, 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 no. I think uh, if they went, the, you know, it depends on their infrastructure. But if they 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 made it a separate game like Fortnite and mm -hmm. made it free to play, mm -hmm. I think that if they can support, if they have the infrastructure in place to be able to do that, they should do it. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's that's that. a good idea. It'd bring, bring more traffic to their adventure mode, I think. It would. Hi. Right. So, next question. Should Sea of Thieves have a more completed form of cooking? So you can make your own dishes. Maybe, maybe it might be the new thing for uncapping the levels in Hunter's Call. That's a great idea, actually. Um, and me and Unibal read the novel, and there's talk about more complicated dishes. So I say complicated, but, you know, stew. Um, so I don't want it to be overly complicated, but maybe you can have two stoves, uh, maybe two, two ingredient dishes, uh, like you add, you know, fish with meat or something like that, uh, and get, you know, more potent, potent dish you could, could eat. Uh, I would like that very much. And you can maybe try to hunt exotic, uh, dishes and try to find, uh, recipes for the hunter's call. Uh, to to unlock more accommodations and you know get your levels up. Uh, of course, it should add more stuff, and it's not it's not going to only be dishes. They should add more different accommodations too. But uh, but yeah, I would like more cooking and uh, uh, more more dish options for sure. I like the idea. They could have like you could shoot birds out of the air, like the seagulls that fly above the barrels. Yes. You could shoot them out of the air, and you could like mix seagulls with fish and make. 
I don't know, some kind of some kind of like concoction of food that's you know that would have the same properties as like monster food, you know, like um, make I... cracked in food. Yeah, and you could, yeah. and for cooking, you would get emissary wrap, and yeah. when you turn it in, you get regular wrap, so that that, that yeah. could work for sure. Yeah, I think additional stuff would be cool, but I wouldn't need a seagull. That's they probably taste like <laughs> trash. You know what seagulls eat? Seagulls eat trash. <laughs> like they, <laughs> seagulls will eat rats. Seagulls will eat other birds. They'll eat poo. Yeah, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't eat seagulls. Nope. All right. <laughs> Uh, Neg- right. Negative XP. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This uh, next question is: Have you ever been able to try the new private servers yet? I know they're not able to be made by anyone. That's not a see if these content creator partner, but have you joined one? Um, kind of touched on this before. I have not. Um, so yeah, that's my answer. <laughs> How about you guys? Nope. Unfortunately, yeah, no, I haven't either. That would be very cool, though. I, and I think Uniball knows a little bit more about uh, these servers because he actually saw some videos about it. Is that correct? Yeah, Cynical and uh, Alcor are posting uh, videos. I, I haven't seen those. Yeah. I haven't seen those. But uh, no, we haven't uh, we haven't joined them yet. And uh, I think uh, Uniball um, uh, said it best that uh, uh, it's still pretty limited from what he's seen. Question number 10, we're almost done. Do you think toxicity in the game is a real problem or do you think Rare makes it bigger than it is? And this is a pretty loaded question because there was some controversy uh, around it. Rare recently reinstated their code of conduct, uh, like reposting the community guidelines. There was some you know, problems with streamers having certain issues also on Reddit. We're not going to go into that. Uh, if you want to know all the drama, you can Google it. I'm not going to go names, but there was some drama surrounding toxicity. Um, so, yeah, uh, you guys can take this question, actually. Do you think toxicity in the game is a real problem? Well, funny you should mention that. We actually, uh, two days ago, I was mm-hmm. playing Arena Open Crew, and I got a guy that was, like, pretty nice. You know, he we had we're chatting away, and then somebody in the, the Arena lobby started saying some like really terrible things in the in the mm. chat and then he also had it so his it was being read out and it was mm. so bad that we're like okay let's just go over there and spawn camp this guy he's solo so we went over mm-hmm. there and spawn camped him two other ships from that server came over and they spawn camped him as well like me and the guy i was with we had the front location a different ship had the re- right behind the steering wheel location and a third mm. ship had the downstairs location and like we didn't try and kill each other we were just spawn camping this guy and yeah, that's how was, bad yeah. it was. Yeah. Like it was like three ships united against one guy, and that's I, all we did is just spawn. It was yeah. So yeah. I mean, so, so you, we you recorded get it, him but, as well. Yeah. yeah. But um, I mean, I I think there's definitely some toxic people out there that. Mm. Yeah. I think so too, and especially in the arena when you have the hop, and you're kind of it's it's already a versus match, right? You're already <clears throat> competing against each other. So there's yeah. always the the sense oh, I want to be better than the other guys. So it, it it and you can talk to them, right? So it really leans towards toxicity, in a way. Like if if you have some people that you know are generally you know the people that curse a lot, it creates you know it creates that um, uh, unpleasant competitiveness, so yeah. to say. Uh, having said that, I don't think it's a CFT's problem at all. I think it's just people online playing yeah. video games. Um, I actually think the CFTs community is a really nice community, yeah. really open community. Um, and uh, if you focus on all the negativity, yeah, of course it seems worse than it is, but I think every game has that. You keep, need to keep in mind that in Call of Duty, you have a lot of people cursing against each other too, but you can't, you cannot hear the other team, right? So right. Um, it's, not, it's, it's not aimed against each other, but in Sea of Thieves, you can hear other crews, better be in an arena or adventure. You yeah. can hear each other, not always, of course, but you can hear each other. So, you know, it leans towards um, cursing to each other, which, you know, it's it's fine to curse during games as long as you don't aim it at somebody. Like right. if you're, that's that's my opinion, right? So everybody right, feels right. different because I I do curse a lot, but it's always in my party. So I can say, oh, that guy is <laughs> is a bitch, but I'm never gonna say that in, in his face because I don't want. You know, him to feel bad about that by, you know, I just say it because I want to, you know, fend off some steam or something like that. Um, yeah. So that's that's how I feel about it. You can curse as just long as you don't aim it at somebody. And of course, racial slurs are 
algebra question always. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. yeah, this guy, I mean, he was saying racial slurs and hate speech and yeah. like, just some really I terrible things. So that, yeah. But I mean, I'm not like, you know, sometimes you board a ship and they're like, hey, you're a trash can as I board up and, you know, yeah, you have two guys fine. with blunderbuss. Yeah, that's. I'm I'm totally fine with that. You know, yeah. it's it's part of it's part of the game. You know, it's kind of like, hey, we won, you lost, you suck, I, or whatever. That's that's right. that's part of part of the game. I, if if but, if 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 yeah, if if it's if, if it's you, in good fun, you know, if it's yes, if it's, as long as yeah, you're not, yeah, I, I, I yeah, if it's just if it's in good fun and everybody's fine with it, you know, I think I think that's fine. But yeah, I mean, yeah. obviously, there's some stuff that should be banned that's bannable, but of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. And people make mistakes, right? If you have you have a teenager, like cussing is like really edgy to do, and mm -hmm. uh, they really like to do. But you know, if as soon as he's a couple of years older, he he knows it's not the way to communicate with other people. Yeah. So you need to keep that in mind too. You know, I mean, this has been around for thirty years. It's not exclusive to Sea of Thieves. It's just mm -hmm. the internet in general, anonymity. Yeah. Um, but. You know, I do. I don't think it. There's a. I mean, there is obviously toxic players in Sea of Thieves, um, mm -hmm. and you know, I mean, which as as an if you're facing that, I mean, you could do what Slim did, <laughs> just make their 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 lives or their PlayStation miserable, or you know, you just <laughs> just meet the player and report them, and and then yeah, move on. Indeed, and that's it. Indeed, that's what you and even 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 try to think of the context too, right? If he's if he's just being aggravated because he got yeah. spawn killed or. Uh, just make sure you know certainly that his his intent is is to hurt other people before be... you report somebody like that. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. we're all human. We all we all say something we don't really mean. Yeah, um, but there are some yeah. stuff that just comes out of the blue. Like I I I recently played, and these little kids yeah. just kept. They're really mean <laughs> to me. I didn't say a single <laughs> word. Every time they killed me, I said GG. Every time I killed uh -huh. them, I said GG. Well, maybe that made them mad. But they were calling me names for no reason. I didn't even uh -huh. open my mic, but anyways. Hmm. All right. Well, maybe they're kids, right? They, they think they're actually, oh, they were. actually yeah. not. Like, and for, for if, you, if, you're, if you like to swear, and if you think that edgy, that's not going to get you anywhere in life at all. It'll get uh, you all the you babes. Will that soon enough. I'm so um, toxic on the internet. You like that? <laughs> 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 All right, let's go to the final question, um, and that is, what's another weapon rare could add? Uh, we can keep this fairly short, I think. So it's and maybe Uzi. something for your <laughs> Uzi, yeah. Uh, maybe something for your ship, a handheld, or something like the Ash and Wind Skull. So that's that's one. I do want more loot uh, that can also be used as a weapon, like maybe a two-handed uh, sword um, that you know breaks the more you use it. Um, so kind of like the Ash and Wind Skull, if you turn it in pristine, you get more gold for it. Um, but it can you know maybe do like 60, 60 damage per swipe or some, something like that. I, again, uh, balancing. We need to really think about that. But uh, I do want to see more loot that has different purposes for sure. Uh, weapons, yeah, if, if they are a weapon, sure. Uh, daggers as a throwable, I would want. Uh, we talked about that before. Um, but I don't want a four, a fifth weapon. I do not want that because that's uh, going to bring a whole slew of issues. So I want consumable weapons or loot as a weapon. Yeah. How do you guys feel about that? What would you like to see added? Oh, the one weapon that gets overlooked is a banana bomb. The good old <laughs> banana on the stove. <laughs> um, oh yeah after yeah. after five minutes or ten minutes or whatever yeah. it is i see yeah. your video about that <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah the good old like. banana bomb um yeah like more throwables would be cool i think uh mm -hmm. like disposable weapons would be kind of cool um and yeah there's there's definitely um you know that's that's something that they could add into the game that give it more content is new weapons and even like a fifth weapon in the in your loadout or throwables or you know there's definitely definitely lots of options there throwing With dagger weapons. that's it throwing dagger 20 percent yeah damage. Right. that, that Eight, 15 that's... to 20 percent damage throwing dagger five you could hold five it's a throwable boom done in the game three months from now guaranteed or a separate <laughs> yeah headshot right. hitboxes that'd be cool oh, no no they get they're good that's gonna <laughs> that's gonna open up a big can of worms <laughs> <laughs> Hit ring. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
so yeah that's it for this uh, segment the message in the bottle uh, if you want us to answer your questions you can put those in the comment section below and yeah we will discuss those in the next podcast uh, keep in mind uh, i'm gonna limit it to five now uh, even though i love answering them but hey we're, we're on schedule and uh, we need to we like to have it to vary it right from different people so uh yeah five is the max um and uh, but please please uh, put them in the comments we do love answering them so with that we also have come to the end of the podcast so i would like to thank slim, slim shanty for being amazing and can you tell our listeners thank you where for they can find you yeah thank you so much for having me it's been it's been a ton of fun the second time around um <laughs> that's it, good to hear uh, yeah, no, it, it was great fun. Um, yeah, of course, you can find me on uh, YouTube, Slim Shanty. I um, will be posting a video pretty soon here. I got a new job, so I've kind of been busier and stuff like that with life in general. But, um, yeah, I got, I got new videos planned. So, yeah, hopefully Ooh, I'll see yeah. you there. Yeah, Sounds great. Definitely check Slim Shanty out. Uh, and Uniball, uh, you have once again been our Lord and Savior. So... Uh... <laughs> Can yes. You tell our listeners where they can find your uh, content on, on the YouTube. You just search YouTube, or yes, search YouTube, and then you search <laughs> Uniball, and I should pop up. But if if not, it's you, uh, youtube.com forward slash Uniball Gaming. All right, and as always, definitely check Uniball out. So I myself can be found on this very channel you're listening to this podcast on. Super obvious. Uh, so please subscribe if you don't want to miss any future podcasts. And after that, go to Slim Shanty and. Uniball, of course, and subscribe to their channels as well. So please consider staying since we have some more content in our after show. Uh, but if not, hey, that's fine too. So thanks again to my amazing guests. And I hope you, the listener, will have a great rest of your day. So stay safe, wash your hands, take care. And I hope you will have some amazing ice cream in your future. All right. I do have ice cream in the fridge right now. <laughs> oh, dude. I made homemade ice cream yesterday. It was awesome. Nice. I think yeah. we're supposed to say goodbye, too. So, goodbye, everybody. <laughs> yeah. See you later. Until next time, stay safe. All right. Nice. That's actually a very nice outro. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had ice cream now. Ah, shit. My my, my freeze is not working well because of the heat right now. So oh, the, How yeah, is this even sucks. possible? How do you guys have things failing just because it's 90 <laughs> degrees? Like, seriously. We're, we're, we're not used to that. It's, that's, it's, you know how the news described it as tropical temperatures, like a tropical heat wave. Yeah, but what, everywhere. are you buying appliances from the 1800s? I mean... <laughs> No, dude, it's like an ice box with like sawdust. The oh harder it is, the quicker God. the ice yeah. melts. We oh. harvest the ice during the winter to keep it cool during the summer. I, oh my God. I think and when your good. ice is gone, it's gone and you can't cool your food anymore. No, I don't know. Like, it's my, I have, I have two doors to my freezer, which is, you know, a combination of my freezer and my refrigerator. And, uh, uh-huh. yeah, it just, it tries to freeze the, the hot air around it, but then it freezes the water in the air and then it melts again. So it's all wet. I think so, you just don't know but, how to use a freezer. Oh, right. no, no. Do you no, leave your door open? A, yeah. Your you need to, you, no, of course seal? not. <laughs> Close your door. Well, not, What's the I'm brand? Dumb. What's the brand? Oh Give me a model What's number the, and brand of your br- I, I, oh refrigerator freezer. There's no brand right. in my freezer. Can't well, the, there you go. Bob <laughs> down the street built your freezer. <laughs> oh, oh my god! But no, it's not made. It's it's a Dutch freezer. It's not made for temperatures oh like god. this. Like this is tropical for us. How... Like like mo- most people don't even have an AC in the Netherlands because it doesn't get that hot. So. Uh, uh so yeah man <laughs> i don't know what else to say i'm sweating here too i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm i'm i'm, I'm really hoping for this podcast to finish it. i can turn my fan back on <laughs> i'm sweating <laughs> oh anyways anyways so <laughs> oh shit this is all off show too um <laughs> so uh let, let's 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 give our listeners a little bit of an off show because i don't want to make it all that long too um what are you guys planning for 
future content? Um, I got a video coming up where I alliance this. I I just did the old um, like oh, I'm just new. I just solo slooped ran into a brig. I'm like I'm just mm-hmm. new. I just got this game. Like yeah, let's make an alliance. It'll be awesome. And then they're like, yeah, let's let's do Athena. We're gonna do an Ash and Athena. So I slap Athena, Ash and Athena down on their ship, and I sail off. I'm just like mm-hmm. looking for other people to troll. And then I can see them on the map. I'm kind of keeping an eye on them. And they're like in the Ash and they're going from like or the Devils where they're going from like island to island. And suddenly they drop the alliance. So I'm like, well, I'll be. So I went over to the last island they're at, found them, tucked on their mm-hmm. ship. And when they went to uh, the Moral Speak Outpost to sell. I spawn killed them and stole all their stuff and sunk their ship and sold everything. Nice. And but they still had the Ash and Athena or the Athena quest down. So I assume I'm like, oh, they probably saw the Athena out there. So then I hung out at the at Morrow's Peak until they came back mm-hmm. and then I stole their <laughs> Athena chest as well. So nice. I took all of their loot and their Athena chest and they oh got nothing God. because they were not they dropped the alliance. Nice. I would have left them alone, but I was just like for yep. some reason, I was like, "That's karma." You're that's about karma to sell, it. and you drop the line, so I'm not going to get nothing. Like that's just I, that's just not that's nice. Mean. So yep, you're gonna yeah. get it. Right. And it took them long enough too. Like they're on there for like an hour and a half, and so it felt hmm. good. Nice. I'm I'm excited. I want to say, even though I know the ending. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to see the video. How about you, Unibel? What's uh, what's your I don't future know. I videos? Mean, I'm still in the pro- like like I said, I'm. You know, mm-hmm. early, like I'm in still in this whole moving process. Yeah. Um. Mm-hmm. So I just got so where I'm at right now. I just got this whole setup on my. I got four screens now on this desk. I got two. Any, nice. Anyways, um. So I don't know. I I was thinking I had a certain ideas that I wanted to do, and I was like, let, let me mm-hmm. do it sometime in August. And then I played with Liquorless last weekend, and it was a very odd session. We sank everybody and stole everything and at the end we steal for the dam but um him and i we just sat at reaper's hideout just talking you know just talking mm-hmm. about sea of thieves content and then we would see a boat in the distance we'll sail over kill it sail back to reapers sell it and just sit there again and then we just sat th- and we did this like multiple times um <laughs> and then finally when he got off i went and there was a galleon that i was like i'm just gonna mess with this galleon and then mm-hmm. it was like, well, I'll jump back on and help you. And then we realized that they had a white light. Then I saw that they had a green light. I'm like, oh, these dudes oh. are going for this. So we set them up. So mm-hmm. I I pretended my ship was on fire. And I was like, I got to get out of here. While Liquorless tucked. And then I hid the boat, came <laughs> over with a rowboat. And then we just completely slayed them out. Um, so I That's might make, awesome. yeah, I might make a video on that. Um, that would be cool i would like to see that but i do so i'm going like fancy like i'm i was thinking of doing a um kind of like a christmas carol uh thing where like the ghost of christmas past like i want to hire a british uh voice (laughs) actress um nice and i want to all right incorporate that into my video with like a Hmm. I'm, i'm talking to somebody and i'm going and seeing stuff in the past Wow, what, what, what an alternate universe. Yeah. Uh, a female. Well, <laughs> <laughs> what are they like? I don't what know. Like? I, don't I don't know. know. <laughs> I was looking at them. <laughs> um, so anyways, I might do something weird like that that's completely that's off the wall. Yeah, cool, I like actually. that. You never know what, what to expect with your videos. So, yeah, so and like I want to play with like Matrix style uh, filming and editing where it's like zoom, super slow-mo and then zoom, hmm. like that kind of stuff. So I'm going to play with that. That'd be cool. All right. But, but that's going to take a while. Very ambitious as usual. But yeah. That's, like uh, if you weren't like that, you weren't even boss. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Are you guys playing, I... on, uh, playing Battletoads, by the way? Which is called Battletoads. Battletoads. Nope. Um, yeah, I, I know you're not that interested, Slim. But I'm gonna. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't know the price of it. I don't know. I really hope it's gonna be cross-platform, so I can play it together with Uniball and Old Buccaneer or something like that. Um, that would be cool. I but have an Xbox. I, oh, you do. Yeah. How do you think I film <laughs> with two characters? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, All right. Cool. Out. Oh, so maybe nice. I should download it. Is it free right now? It's on Game Pass. Okay. You know what else Pass. is on Game Pass that I saw is the flights, the flight simulator, the PC Microsoft flight simulator. 
Do you like that? I might try. I've never played it before, but it looks awesome. I saw Absolute Pixel was playing it last night. Oh, all right. Yeah, he's good. He's good with his content, too. All oh. right, cool. Do you nice. have a Thompson refrigerator? A what? A Thompson. No, I don't have. No. I... What the fuck? <laughs> <It is> cast. <laughs> What's, all right, what's all right. Is cast? it like there's no? Is it built no. out of lead? <laughs> oh my god! I'm on guys. BCC's website. Like, right I don't know that. You. It's just it's just a white. <laughs> I'll open it up. Lieb if hair. a nuclear it's bomb just, were to go nothing. off, you crawl just... inside. Oh no! It's a it's a oh here it is. It's an um, Etna. Et... Spell it. E T N A. Yes. E T N A Dutch refrigerator. Did you buy it from BCC? Well, my fridge show, but I might as well grab a beer. <laughs> <laughs> hey. At least my beer is cold. But, uh, yeah, and I, I can ask my landlord about it, maybe. But, I know. It always acts up when it's... Uh... You know, it's, it's hot, man. It always acts up when it's as hot as this. I, I'm melting, too. I'm sweaty all over. I'm showering like three times a day now just to get the sweat off. It's uh, it's not no. fun. It's not fun living in the Netherlands right now. Oh, um, let's see. Uh, one other thing I do want to address in the off show. I recently saw Cutthroat Island. I don't know if you guys heard of that movie. It's a pirate movie. Um, it's it's one of the m- uh, most produced, overproduced films that flopped uh, incredibly, but I love it. Um, the acting is, is isn't that great, but the production value is so so nice, guys. The uh, you have explosions, you have sword battle, this constant action, um, and the fu- the final is is really great. But the interesting thing about Kirkland Island is uh, the name of the ship, the pirate sail, is the Morning Star, which oh, I real? thought was really interesting. And the name of the enemy pirate ship is called the Reaper. So we have the Reapers and the pro- Morning This Star. probably influenced them. Of course, yes, yes. That's so there, there are a lot of hints uh, to to pause rare games and see if these, but yeah, there are also a lot of hints to, uh, to those classic pirate movies. So uh, I say classics, nineteen ninety five, I believe, but uh, yeah. it's still it's, with it's Gina nice. Davis. Yeah. Yes, with Gina Davis, indeed. I like her actually. I do like her in the movie, even though. I'm pretty sure you I've know, seen this. People movie. say her acting is bad, but I don't know. I, I, I like it. I don't like the male lead. He's a bit nah. Matthew be better, but well. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently that, that movie ended their careers. <laughs> no, Gina did oh, wow. no, 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 no. I don't think that ended Gina. She had a career after that. <sighs> Maybe. Like what? Hold on. Let's see what else she was in. <laughs> oh, oh she, a league of her own was her her best. And that was ninety. Mm. That was ninety two. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't think she did much after nineteen ninety five. Anyways, uh, people are listening, and you want to see a a bad pirate movie that's somehow also good production wise. Uh, you're gonna have a blast with that one for sure. Yeah. What's the especially what's the title? The, Cutthroat, Cutthroat Island. Island. Cutthroat Island, nineteen ninety five, and and and, and, the, and the plot is literally they want to find treasures, so it's uh, it's it's as cliche as it could get, uh, and there are some references, uh, like I said, with the Morning Star and Reaper, so uh, pretty sweet. Uh, but it hits all the cliches, uh, and you can definitely see uh, um, that you know Pirates of the Caribbean owes a lot to that movie, like a lot. But uh, yeah, definitely check it out. Maybe it did kill her. Anything killer. else you guys want to discuss in the after show? <laughs> Not off the top of my head. All right. Well, that's fine. Um, because usually we have a, a couple of topics. And like I said before, I don't want to make it all that long. So for the people who are still listening, thank you. Uh, I, I always, well, I try to say this all the time now, uh, that the people, I love all my subscribers, but the people that are listening to the podcast, I just like a little bit more, just a little bit more. <laughs> so uh, thanks to listening to us ramble even in the after show. Uh, I hope it's a lot cooler where you are at. Uh, and that's it. Have a lovely day, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care. Nice. Oh, you guys can Good say job. goodbye again, by the yeah. way. <laughs> yeah, I was waiting for a slam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how's that? Okay. Yeah. Say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, goodbye everybody. everybody. It's been lovely. So, um, and goodbye that, as well. <laughs> Very lovely. <laughs> uh,
All Captain right, Blubber is the loveliest. <laughs> Isn't he lovely? <laughs> Thank you. You can stop recording now. <laughs>